Six Nations Super Saturday kicks off in Cardiff with a must-win game for Wales if they're to avoid a first wooden spoon for 21 years. Warren Gatlin's team face Inform Italy, who've got previous here at the Principality. Beautiful day in Cardiff. 100 caps and about to be upstaged. The giant of the Welsh game. Italy 36 games without a win. Can you understand the arguments about having some kind of relegation, some kind of playoff? It's a question that the Italian Federation needs to ask themselves. On days like these, when skies are blue and fields are green. Italy are very much on the front foot. I look around and think about what might have been. Wales take the lead. And then I hear sweet music float around my head. Italy are building themselves a platform here. Remembering the on days like these. Wales back into the lead in the nick it's of time. days like these that are Caport, so. has to be made. Italy have won in Cardiff. How special to hear the dulcet tones of our Eddie. And now just six of the 23-man Wales squad survived from two years ago. George North wasn't involved that day, but returns to the starting lineup for what will be his final appearance in a Welsh shirt after 14 years and 121 caps. So this is how things stand going into the final day. Ireland can clinch the title with victory over Scotland. Defeat for the Irish could open the door for England, who play France in Lyon. Wales need to beat Italy by more than seven points and deny the Italians a bonus point to move off the bottom of the table. Well, just the 313 international caps between my trio this afternoon, Sam Warburton, Martin Johnson, and Sergio Parisi here for us. Welcome. Um, we'll get to Wales in a moment, but the positives first. And Italy and their performance in this Six Nations. How pleasing has that been for you? Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic result, uh, especially because Italy didn't win uh, since so many years in Rome. So it was fantastic for the Italian rugby. Still just a win, so uh, obviously this team needs to improve a lot. But, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, performance, in terms of what they, did, they do against France in two weeks, uh, two weeks before and, uh, and the victory today, I make this team approach this game against Wales with a lot of confidence. So hopefully we can see an Italian team who can you know, put the Wales under pressure. And make history, uh, perhaps, yeah. this afternoon. You were very optimistic ahead of France last weekend. Your mood today? <laughs> Uh, I got a massive bit of custard pie on my face today <laughs> after last week. I genuinely thought Wales were going to win the last two, and the French game did really rock me. I didn't expect Wales to not be able to compete with the French, particularly the bench in the second half. Very different team today, though. Um, both teams probably play more of a similar style of rugby, an, an attacking style of rugby. I'd back Wales to win today, but I think Italy can do enough to not finish bottom of the championship. So, yeah, very different opposition, very different challenge to last week. But, no, I'm not as confident as I have been. So, yeah, I'm uh, intrigued to see what happens. Uh, you were with us on that sunny Saturday two years ago, Martin, when Italy pulled off that win. And at the time, and because of the run of defeats they've been on, it did feel like something of a one-off, didn't it? And they're backing up results now. Yeah, they didn't look like they were going to win that game until right at the end, and then they pulled off a you know, really dramatic emotional victory. But you watch them do this tournament. They've played pretty well in, in most of the games. Certainly against England, they were very good. France, they, they probably should have won that game at the end. So I think the big challenge for them again today is after last week's emotional win, is to back that up and, and you know, perform today as well. OK, well, let's have a look at the team news then. And Warren Gatland has made five changes from that defeat against France. George North and Nick Tompkins return in the centre, replacing Owen Watkin and Joe Roberts. Tight head prop Dylan Lewis takes over from Kieran Azirati, while captain Daffith Jenkins is back in the second row, with flanker Alex Mann starting at six. 
Well, Italy are missing their talismanic fullback, Ange Capuozzo, who, of course, set up that winning try here two years ago. He's out with a broken finger. He's replaced by Lorenzo Pani. Uh, two other changes. Stephen Varney, who was born in West Wales, starts at scrum half ahead of Martin Pejrello. And number eight, Lorenzo Canone, comes in for Ross Vincent's. Italy have twice won two games in the Six Nations, 2007 and 2013, but a win today would complete their best ever campaign after that draw against France and, of course, last week's victory over Scotland. Verso pagine lo calcetto per Brex, Nacho! Pallone che si alza e si sì, arriva a destinazione. Luis Leinak che può raccogliere, può andare verso la meta. Luis Leinak, debutto con meta. Sempre Italia, sempre in attacco. Fammi a chiudere questa azione meravigliosa. Il sinistro di Paolo Carvisi in mezzo ai pali. If you win today, Gonzalo, and results go your way, you could finish as high as third in the table, which would be a first. Is your team ready to seize this opportunity? Honestly, um, we, we spent the week uh, as the whole tournament speaking more about what we need to improve on the pitch, what we need to do to put ourselves in a competing mode, really being, on, uh, being able to, to be on the game for 80 minutes. And uh, we are learning that process of trust and belief in what we do so that the results come. But we know that the worst thing we can do is talk about what happens if we win the results in the world ranking in the, <laughs> in the tournament. That could distract us and it's something we cannot control. So hopefully they didn't get distracted and they are ready to play for their game and then we will see what happens. You hit an emotional high against Scotland. Do you think you can match that again against a Wales team that is scrapping to salvage their Six Nations? That consistency is the main goal, uh, the main purpose almost that uh, the players are training for, because in the past it happened during one good game. Uh, this year we did a good performance against England. We struggled to do it again against Ireland. But then we did a really good performance in France and we backed it up against Conlad and home. Now that, that's the biggest challenge we are facing, playing in such a high, hard environment like the one we're going to live today in the Principality and do a third good performance in a row and ideally improve because that's what happened between France and Scotland and that's what we try to do. Play better and hopefully playing better. We, it could be enough, maybe not, because we know that the, the, the team we have in front will be highly motivated. Go well today, thank you. Thanks a lot. You know Gonzalo Casada from Stade Francais, of yeah. course, um, and he talks about backing up results and consistency. What has he changed to achieve that from the team that underperformed at the World Cup? Yeah, very tough World Cup. <laughs> in the last two games in the World Cup was really tough. Look, Gonzalo don't have too many time to work with this team, but just so I think he brings some balance. Uh, we saw this Italian team who have a good shape in attack, but still conceded too many tries. So I think they, they spend a little bit more time on defense and uh, in, in their kicking game and trying to play smart, play, play in the good areas on the field. So that is what Gonzalo brings. He's a really smart coach. I think they have a very good, talented players in the squad. So that is the result of, uh, of his work. And hopefully they can keep this consistency. And, uh, you know, after the game against France, a win against Scotland is a very, very important game today for this team to show if they have you know, uh, have this step forward and, you know, mentally uh, be able to play three good games in a row. Emulating his passion as well. And the way they withheld Scotland, actually, at the end of that game, their defence was very impressive, wasn't it? Not letting them in and Scotland knocking on the door. But we did talk two years ago in the studio, didn't we, about opening up this tournament to relegation. Are you, are you still, I assume, still for that? I bet there's loads of Italians at home like, oh, what are you going to say now? <laughs> how, you could, how Wales could finish bottom? Absolutely. If Wales finished bottom, I don't think any union 
just have a God-given right. They just have the cash cow every year of the Six Nations. I think it would keep everyone on their toes. It would drive further improvement in every union. And by the way, when I said that, Italy won a 36-game losing streak. Wales are 11 out of 12, mind, so they're not they're not doing great. But I just think the sport needs jeopardy. It needs drama. It wouldn't be automatic relegation. I think it would be a playoff between them and whoever wins the rugby championship. More often than not, Georgia could be Portugal this year. But I just think it'd be great jeopardy, great entertainment for the competition. So Italy, the way they're playing, absolutely deserve to be in this tournament. They've been brilliant. So they've really turned it around the last few years. We'll be talking George North in just a moment, but, but perhaps in Tommaso Manoncello, you've got a player who could be in the team of the tournament. He has yeah. really excelled, hasn't he? Excel. I think the with Nacho Brex, the other centre, I think they, they're one of the best of the tournament, honestly. Uh, just when you see his game in attack and defence, uh, he's a massive athlete, very strong. Uh, he carry hard. Uh, he never stops. He's a machine, honestly. He's a great athlete. So, you know, he's still young. He's 21 years old. So they have, you know, a bright future. Yeah, and in terms of leading a team like Italy, where you know you are going to be facing, as you did in your career, so many campaigns where victory proved elusive, Michele Lamaro has really Im impressed as well in terms of how he's got hold of this team. He obviously does the same thing for Treviso, doesn't he? And um, where yeah, exactly. they're doing very well. Yeah, exactly. In the USC. Yeah, big captain of the Italian team and be there. Uh, you must be resilient. You know that sometimes. You spend tough time. Uh, it's very easy to lead a team when you win every single weekend. Uh, but I think Lamaro, you know, uh, he shared uh, all the process with a lot of these uh, teammates in the under 20s in the academy. Uh, most part of this team played together in Treviso, so they played together every single day. And, you know, he has especially the respect. When you're a leader or a captain, you need to have the respect of, of your team. And, and, and he has the respect. And, you know, he put the body on the line. He, tackled, he, he made most of the tackle in these six nations. So, you know, uh, he led by example and he's fantastic. You're kind of leader, Jono. Yeah, he, he, look, he's done very well. And uh, I think Italy, have, you know, they're very, they've um, talked about defence. I thought their defence was good. They're very, they're very good over the ball. They're very good over the ball. They, they'll turn the ball over if you give them a chance. So it'll be interesting to see how they go today after a huge emotional win last week. Uh, Louis Liner committed his international future to Italy just ahead of the Six Nations. He'd been knocking on the door for England, which is his birth country. His dad, of course, you know very well, Martin, played against him, Michael Liner. He looked like he made the perfect choice last week, 100% <laughs> record and a try. Yeah, he turned up, win. This is easy, isn't it? <laughs> but I, th I think the important thing, he didn't, there wasn't a lot of play on his wing early on, but when he had that chance, he took it. And that's what international rugby is. You might not get called upon for half an hour to do, and then you have to take that chance, and he did it. And uh, he didn't look out of place at all, so another step up today for him. Yeah, his, his mum is Italian mum, and his dad, Michael, watching last week, looked delighted uh, in the stands. And they're back today uh, for more. A different kind of test today they're going to be up against, against Wales. But... Um, no doubt, so proud of their boy and what he's done so far. Well, uh, Wales fans uh, have seen their side win just one of their last 12 matches in the Six Nations. It's been six defeats in a row at home. Quite the rebuilding job for Warren Gatland then. He's with Sonia. Well, Warren, there's a fair bit of pressure floating around. Uh, how do you view it? There's always pressure about international rugby, so um, to me it's about embracing it. It's kind of like not hiding away from the challenge, not ignoring it. Uh, you go in there and um, probably you could look yourself in the mirror after this and put a tickle across next to your name, whether you, whether you handle it, whether you embrace it. And I said to the players beforehand, you know, it's a, there is a challenge out there. We've got to be excited about it. That means about backing your decision making, backing your skills, don't be, don't, not being conservative, not going into your shell. Um, but because I've been involved with teams, players at the other end of the spectrum, players that have been involved in semi finals or World Cups who kind of went into, you know, didn't have that confidence, self belief, gone into the shell a little bit. So, um, yeah, just got to take the challenge on and, and face it. George North's 121st and final test match for Wales. One of the all time greats in the red jersey? Oh, absolutely. Phenomenal athlete. Um, brilliant rugby player. Probably 10 years ago, we, he was really at his best, um, but moved him from the wing into the midfield. Uh, but what I take away from that and the experience I've had with him, it's not just about him being uh, a good rugby player or a great rugby player. What he was is, is what a fantastic person is, what a good man he is. And um, he's been brilliant, always been fantastic in the environment in terms of anyone who's come in, how, how diligent he's been, how encouraging he's been. 
what a professional he has been and setting an example to, to the younger players. And that's probably the most respect or the biggest respect I have for him. Good luck today. Thank you, Jess. And there is George North, 121 Wales caps, 47 tries, two Grand Slams, four Six Nations titles. He's played in four World Cups and made three test starts for the Lions. What a servant he has been to Welsh rugby. I didn't think this day would come. It feels like the right time now for me personally. It's not being an easy decision. For me, it's, it's always been about being the best I can be for Wales and being the best I can be with the three feathers on my chest. It's been awesome. Everything expected and more, really. I've loved every single second of it. I've cherished every single second, the highs and the lows. Wales have won the Grand Slam! I couldn't have written it better myself, to be honest. George North is in for the try, and it may be the one which wins this match. Ashley Cooper turns back, but this for now! Try for George North! I've been very fortunate to live a dream that not many people get to do. Infield to George North! I think for 14 years, I don't think anyone can ever doubt what I've offered her. I think when you know, you know. For me, it's, it's been the dream, and, um, and in my heart, I know it's the right time for me to step away. George North! Under the sticks! North with the carry, the finish, and the celebration. He's one of your good friends in rugby, isn't he, George North? Sum up what he means and what he's contributed to Welsh rugby, also the Lions. Who can forget that iconic image of him carrying Israel for allow? I, I don't normally like using these platforms to try and show your pally with, with, with players, but I, I do today feel like a proud brother with George, like very, very close to him, and I think he deserves it. He was having an iron whether he should have called it now or whether he should carry on. He's not the sort of player who deserves to go into the international wilderness. I think to be able to have a home game where he can have the ovation he will have, the standard ovation. I don't think he realises how much he's loved by the Welsh public. When you're an international player, you focus a lot on the negative, naturally, because that's just what trickles through your social media feeds. Nice people don't take time out of their day to say how much they think of you. He has no idea how much people think of him. He's one of the all-time Welsh greats. It sparked a lot of conversation this week. Everyone's saying who's in the best 10 Welsh players ever. Pretty much gets in everyone's top 10. Unbelievable athlete. He shouldn't move like he does at six foot four and 17 stone. Like he's a freak of an athlete, and that's why he, you couple that with an immense work ethic and professionalism. That's why he's had 121 caps. So, um, yeah, I remember the first time I encountered him, he came into the gym, and where all the big boys go in the gym, which is normally your strongest guys, he walked straight there. He's 18 years of age. He started just pressing more than anyone else. And we were all looking at the corner of our eyes like, who, who on earth is this genetic freak? But like I said, Great player, great professional, top bloke as well. So I hope he gets the reception that he won't be expecting, but that he deserves today. And the, the emotion that he showed in that press conference actually, I think, took him by surprise. Um, he will put that to one side uh, for 80 minutes or more today. But I think that there will be a lot of emotion because he's boy to man, as you mentioned, 18 years old. He achieved so much so young. Oh, it's massive. Like 18 years of age, he, he came into this team, only had five or six games for the Scarlets. Played against South Africa, scored two tries. I think the thing with George is he came in so young, set the bar so ridiculously high. He's part of some of like modern rugby's iconic moments with probably arguably the best solo try in a Lions test match ever, picking Israel Falau, 100 kilo man, and running with him. He, he came through just and hit such great heights. And um, yeah, I think he's going to be one of the all time Welsh players. We're talking about George's physicality. Wales were lacking in that area, weren't they? At the end of that match last week, the last 20 minutes or so, totally overpowered by the physicality of France. Things will improve under Warren Gatton, but where is that going to come from? How are you going to change the way you play? Well, I think you only, you only, for some of those players, that would have been a baptism last week. They're playing one of the best teams in the world, one of the biggest, most powerful teams in the world. So you have to come off that field and go, OK, that's what it's all about. That's Test Match Rugby. I need to improve individually. We need to improve as a team. You, you only get better playing against the best. They're playing Italy today. That's a chance for them to go and, and be better than they were last week. In terms of the regions and what they're providing 
for the national setup. You know, is that talent coming through the pathway? This is probably a conversation that we could go and have and spend an hour discussing. In fact, we, we have done over the last few weeks. But can you give us a, 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 a nutshell? Where's it coming from, that talent? Yeah, I think there's a few things that need to change. Warren Gatlin got a bit of criticism for what he said in the, in the press recently when he questioned that the regions weren't professional enough. But I think a lot of the regions actually deep down kind of half agree. I, I, I agree with them in the sense you need the best possible facilities, you need the best coaches, you need all this infrastructure, which I think co the, the coaches are there. Infrastructure might not be there with facilities, but that's getting there. That is the ambition of the region. So they're on an upward trajectory. But then you've got to look at the academy system. And it's quite common knowledge in Wales. There's a lot of Welsh qualified players from the age of 16 to 18 playing in England. And they've just fallen out of that fishnet. We don't have a big player pool. So Wales need to make sure that every player who's credible, who's young, some of them might want to go away, You're not going to stop them, of course, but try and keep as many as you can in the system and nurture them. And they do that brilliantly in Ireland, you hear. And the academies used to be WIU governed. Now they're not, they're with the regions. So there's a question there whether, are we seeing now the side effect of the academies going over to the regions and not with the WIU? There's so many vari like sort of variables to factor into it, but we don't have a big player pool. We need to harness absolutely everything that we have at academy level. Some positives for Wales in terms of individual performances. Tommy Raffel is one of those, and he's uh, potentially on for most turnovers in the tournament. He gets a few today, um, chasing an, an all time record held by John Barkley. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> so he, he has been a highlight. He's, but he, he it, for me, is an absolute worker. You know, you see him in there at the bottom of everything. And for every turnover he gets, there's two or three where you're at the bottom of a pile getting smashed and you don't get any you know, praise or, or notoriety. So he has been a real plus for Wales for me. Yeah, John Barkley uh, leading the way on 11. And uh, of course, uh, a few, uh, quite a few players there in between him and Reffel, but uh, a few more today and he'd be up there on top of that list. Um, now, Martin, do you know what record you hold in the Six Nations? Oh, surprise, surprise me. <laughs> I've got to read it to make, because it's, it's one of the most, not most obscure, but one of the more obscure, okay? Uh, definitely prestigious. Uh, most average pens conceded per game by an England player in the Six Nations. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a recount? <laughs> <laughs> You're not having that one. No. We'll leave it. We haven't got the top ten, deny, by the way. Deny, so. deny. <laughs> uh, Sergio, um, Italy will know that they face Wales in a vulnerable period in, you know, in their development, won't they? And obviously yeah. today wanting to avoid a wooden spoon, wanting to avoid what would be a very disappointing campaign for them. Yeah, of course. Um, no, I think it, on the process of this Italian team, I think they are in a good in a good way. Um, the under 20 performed very well since like three, four years, and uh, they're still a very young team. Uh, this Italian team who played today. So uh, today, uh, as I said before, I think they have everything to win. Uh, you can do your best performance in the tournament, or you can just lose another game. So I think the the boys are ready for the game. Well, George North uh, getting ready to run out for the final time in a Wales shirt into this cauldron. It's a packed house here at the Principality Stadium. Here he goes, and here we go. The next voices you'll hear are Andrew Cotter, Jonathan Davis and John Barkley. Well, one final game in this championship for these two teams and for one man, even more of a conclusion. But for George North, how does this great story end? He has the pitch to himself for moments that he will enjoy, but he'll only remember them fondly if he wins this final game. That is what he is all about in this great career. And Wales says thank you for his service, but one more game in the red to play. What an atmosphere as ever in Cardiff for this final game for these two teams in this championship and what a game in prospect. Both teams so, so desperate for the win. And again, two of the finest anthems to look forward to here. This revitalized, reborn Italian side playing very, very effective rugby indeed. And they will be the first to sing their anthem with their traveling support.
Well, so Lewis Lyon, it's Italian mother Isabella, certainly knows the works. Michael Lyon alongside him watching on today. And now for, as ever, the voluble response from Wales. what it means a day a game an anthem laden with emotion George North determined to end on a high so to the teams for today and for Wales David Jenkins restored to his more familiar second row position after an outing at blindside allowing the youngster Alex Mann two tries so far in this championship to come back to the flank a quite a lightweight back row the front row shuffle continues Dylan Lewis starting today at tight head the midfield battle is going to be one to watch for Wales. That means their first choice combination, Nick Tompkins and the last hurrah for North. Rio Dyer is looking for a trio of home tries after scoring against Scotland and France. Now, Italy have a very tight unit as a pack of forwards. Seven of them play together for Benetton. The odd man out is loose head prop Danilo Fischetti. Captain Michele Lamaro was inspirational against Scotland, making 27 tackles. Negri also a big presence after missing the games against Ireland and France. In the back line, no tormentor of Wales from two years ago in Ange Capuozzo. So Lorenzo Pani goes to fullback. Menoncello and Brex form that potent midfield. And there is a Welshman born and raised in Stephen Varney in the Azzurri scrum half jersey. Now we should see another new cap for Wales today in Scarlet's tight head prop Harry O'Connor. Kieran Hardy in his replacement scrum half. Italy with a 6-2 split on the bench. Uh, Ross Vincent and Manuel Zuliani are both back rowers. So they believe they are closing in on something not yet achieved by an Italian side in the Six Nations, achieving more than just two wins. They have a win and a draw so far. And they're looking to do today what they did two years ago in Cardiff. But there is something carrying this Welsh side today. Of course, it is not just down to one man, but as well as George North, everybody will be determined to give him the perfect send-off, but to give Wales the win, to avoid the whitewash. The referee for this one is from France, Mathieu Reynal. So two teams and 73,000 are ready. We're ready for the first game on the final weekend of the Six Nations. And immediately it's Lamoureux hurled down Warren Gatlin talking about how important the start is for this Wales Use side. It. It's always so important for any side playing. And Varney. Now here is Cameron Winnett. And immediately after all the noise and anticipation and excitement, the buzz around the stadium, it just settles down to a rather nervous hush. Everyone knows Stop. how Stop. important this game is, even they for are. two teams at the bottom of the table. Yeah, you can feel the pressure, but Wales have got to embrace it, haven't they? They've got Stop. to, you know, dictate the tempo. They want to play it unstructured. 
but to do that they have to go forward first of all so the first 20 minutes will be vitally important it'll be very interesting to see how Wales play this game Thomas Williams flings it infield quickly to Costello Away. who sends it high and tries to chase it down hit a bit of traffic so Monte Ioanni with plenty of time and the step beautifully done by Ioanni is away now has support Garbisi oh just as he pulled the trigger his foot was caught couldn't send through the kick and win it Ruth Jenkins return in the field and again it's just you can almost hear individual voices down there it's amazing how it's just fallen away there, there is a nervousness around there's Lorenzo Pani in at fullback today for Capuazzo that's dangerous you know you can't uh, kick loosely that's so to Jan, he gets a big and a desperate tackle with David Jenkins just holds that attack first line out works well for Wales and a chance for the midfield to move it just a little delay of the pass Tackle! Away, thanks. And Wales do get it to ground. But again, it's so slow, that is. You know, they've just not many options here now. Take it up and then he'll get back into the box. Costello put a kick in again. So they're not going through many, many phases. Ball is there, says Mathieu Reynal. And it is. But it's a slow, thoughtful ball. And Thomas Williams will send it towards the roof again good contest and well taken down by Dyer Italy try and hold him up but Mills do well with the offload some fierce early tackles coming in from Italy they've got a good bit of strength about them this Italian side now George North just whips it out to Josh Adams tries to free his arms then there's the carry by Alex Mann Still not over the gain line though. Nope. Four or five phases, there you go, and that's the error. And this is a microcosm of what they're doing. The lowest gain line success in the Six Nations. Yes, they lack power, but you get slow ball from first phase like we saw, Jiffy. It becomes so hard to then try and generate some. Yeah, it's very difficult. They're not committing, the Italians are not committing, you know, many players into the, the tackle area, the contact area, so they're spreading across the field. Just got to take it through the phases. And I saw, you know, the first play there, Tompkins to, to George North. They just put the board there. They know George is the main carrier, so they got to use him as a decoy. There was a, a little tip off behind George North there. And there was a gap opening up on the wide. They've got to look and see the play what's in front of them. Right. A rallying cry from the stands that quickly dies away. First scrum. Bye. You think of the weight that the French pack had, almost 100 kilos heavier on this Italian pack, but it's a good unit, works well, and Brex is the link, and now suddenly Varney has support outside, and here is Lina, Lina deep into the 22. Great break by Italy, but then the ball on the floor seized. Tompkins did exceptionally well there. I think it was his mistake, really. He stepped inside, should have stayed out. No, ball, ball. Well, as well as Wales did in defence there, there are concerns that Italy made such ground. So again, it's slow. It's the cleaning kick from Thomas Williams. And it's the take by Paolo Garbisi. Contestable ball, well placed but well taken as well by Williams and able to set it back. Eventually, no penalty to Italy, holding on, just took a fraction too long. It looked like Fischetti, it was a great kick, great way on the kick by Garbisi, no nonsense in that middle third, and a great chase, it looks like Daniello Fischetti gets over the ball, we'll see, yeah, look for number one there, in such a good position, yeah. Wales will be disappointed though, it's a very hard to win a retreating ruck, but you've got Wayne right and Alex Mann there, and can win it, three men against one. Oh. Uh, it's just like straight away, Andre. You know, a little bit of a kicking battle. They win the the aerial contest. They get a real first opportunity by sloppy play by Wales, really, because they allowed the Italians to get on the outside of them from an easy play, which created this field position. The penalty should be the three points. We've got a BC steadier ball on the tee. So one fall off against France and against Scotland. And through she goes, so Italy with the first three points, and again, 
deserve. They've, they've coped with any attack that Wales had early on, then launched a good one themselves and, and earned the reward. Yeah, that's, you know, that's an easy play. You've got to read that a little bit better and communicate. To get on the outside, that's so easy from first phase from them. Very straightforward, three points for Italy. And uh, Costello goes long. And there's enough time for Italy to form a full catching pod there, Varney complains. Stop now, stop. Use it nine. And uh, as Thomas Williams has done, you take it back through the sort of caterpillar rock, the stretched out train of legs. Another well-placed kick, this one taken down nicely though by Winnett. And Aaron Wainwright. Italy looking very physical on the gain line here. Really organised. Good tackle selection again. Tackle now! And Tommy Reffel. Thank you. Tackle is called by the referee, so Italy have to let him go. A little pop over the top. Rio Dyer looking for the bounce, but eludes everyone. Costello just punches it out wide. Anybody's to claim, and the Azzurri have it. Pani stretches it back, and Italy have the advantage. Knock on advantage. So just a weighty gathering of forwards to carry up the blind side. Watch the work that Negri gets through today, the blind Easy. side for and the Azuri. For so once again, Varney gets it away beyond Adam Beard and win it, waiting for Wales and fielding well again. It's a good chase by Monte Ioanni. Carried by Welsh loosehead Gareth Thomas. Aaron Wainwright. Now George North just delays and gives and Dyer skips. Now Thomas Williams complains and this time the penalty goes to Wales. Not rolling away. At the moment the Italian kicking game is slightly more accurate than the, than the Welsh game. They, they're competing for it, putting pressure on the catcher, making it difficult, slowing everything down for Wales. But this will be the an opportunity to get good field position from uh, the lack of discipline by the Italians. So Sam Costello to try and find a bit of an angle on his right boot, get as far down there as possible. Well, it's not too bad, just about to the 22. Interesting to see what approach they take you where they go direct. Looks like Tommy Rafael's in where they're going to do a quick breakout more and use here. Yeah, they're breaking out. Now can they move it? Tompkins manages to bounce off one challenge. Lamaro, the Italian captain, gets him down. Then Dyer coming in off the wing looking for the walk. It's been turned over. Yeah. Yes. A sin committed by Wales there. Great work by Italy. That was a wonderful position for Wales. Good work on the ground by the Azzurri again, and now they have a little bit of space if Brex can find it and find support from Ioanni. His kick half charged down into touch. Yeah, it, looked, it looked like a pre. We've seen that structure from a Warren Gatlin team so many times where you hit direct and you see the winger sniffing around. It was Rio Dyer on that occasion, so yeah, great first carry. Then Rio Dyer goes through the middle, so it's pre planned, but it's, oh, it's Nicotera there. The front row, all of them at Fritz, they're very strong over the ball, but. Again, very disappointing from a Welsh Ten. point of view how, pro how lack of productivity there is. Yeah, and they've got to go through the phases, John, haven't they? And it just shows the confidence the Italians have got. Stay, they're a couple of men away. extra spare, not afraid to pass in their own 22. This time it's Wales putting on the pressure, but Italy do manage to get it back. Use it! It's again, the forwards offer the protection, and once again, Varney gets it away. Josh Adams, oh, he rather... Lost himself in the air there, but good take. It's got to go. Great line speed there with the Italians, though. They just shot up, tried to turn Wales back inside. They achieved it. As LED made some ground, but the Welsh players calling out for it. Costello down the middle, and enough time for Lorenzo Pani. Ooh, tripped up by the grass and now tries to get his way around. Rio Dyer, oh, he's done so well. Pani then into touch. Raffle eventually getting to him. Oh, yeah, it's good play. Good play what by uh, Wales putting the pressure on him. Mistake by, by Pani. But again, I just feel that Wales, they're just not offering anything at the moment. They're straight back into the pocket. Costello kicks. If Pani doesn't make a mess of it, you know, they'd easily clear that. But they get, you know, field position now. 
Now, Elliot D, he's, a, he's an accurate throw no. into the line. He's your man. faithful Look, last words, but he usually hits his target. Please, we'll just Italy. set the Wait. line out properly. Once again, it's Adam Beard soaring with help from his friends, and Riffle gets them moving. Oh, Rio Dial coming in on the angle, but that was easily enough read by Italy. Put him to ground smartly. Good rolling work from Elliot D. Going backwards. There's an aggressive Italian tackling. Come up so swiftly, and they're hitting hard. Yet again, look, one, one man on the ground for the Italians. Blanket of blue nice. across the field in a defensive line. So, on to six phases now, but just poking away at the gain line, no more than that. Thomas Williams flings backwards. it out, did it go backwards? Yes, says the referee, but hack free. Dangerous for George North. Lamoureux on top of him, over him, and they get the penalty. Lack of gain line is killing Wales at the moment. Yeah, it's they really organised, look physical, look very urgent, but at the moment Wales can't get over that gain line. We saw last week 36% gain line success. You'd imagine it'd be much more below that oh. as Lamar gets another holding on penalty on the ground. But that is three holding on penalties, which is usually a pretty clear indication that you're not winning that physical that battle. That just forces the error, doesn't it? And they get a fly hack to it. George North goes back. It's a simple jackal penalty. But as, as John has just said, they're hitting it up in ones. They've been smashed by two Italian defenders who are relishing it at the moment. The line speed is good. They've got to ask questions of the defensive line. Try and run at the arm, try and get over that gain line. So Paolo Garbisi, once more, similar position. A better strike on that one as well, same result, and Italy out to a six-point lead. I, I mean, Italy's defence looks already a lot better than the French defence looked last week. It, it does, but it's the whole chicken and egg scenario, isn't it? How, how do you get a quick ball where well, you've got to be physical, but how, if you're struggling for physicality, how can you create it? So, but it's the same as last week, but Wales are through the championship at the slowest or the most number of rucks under three seconds, so an indication of how good ball you're getting. So. We would have seen it when Scotland played against Italy last week. Yeah, they, didn't, they, they challenged them at the breakdown. They challenged them with multiple options. And that's what you've got to throw yourself at a really organised defence. You've got to have more than one option to stress individual defenders. Well, this time it is Italy not releasing, and so Wales have a chance to hit straight back. It's a good steal. Uh, Dylan Lewis so just gets in there over the, the top. Super. He's isolated. They won't be happy that, Lamar, from a, from a, a kick-off. He's off. isolated on his own. Okay. You, you say you said me penalty against. No, there okay, is a, there an is instruction, an instruction coming on in. The support of Italy, right? Ah, there we are. Okay. Obstruction on Captain. Italian men coming in, so this might be reversed. There is an obstruction by Red Eleven well, gonna be on turned, the first support of it's Italian. Italian penalty now. Why you can jackal the ball? So I will reverse the PK penalty kick against you. Well, there we are. Italian penalty, and this is why we're talking about him being isolated, Michele Lamaro. Uh, because they couldn't get to support him, that was the decision. That's, I think that's a. What you watch, Rio do you? If that's that, that's 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 a ridiculous decision, Nigel. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's very strange to teach him all coming in for something that they got for you. That, that's something or nothing. They don't tend to come in unless it's something really, really clear and obvious foul play or if a try has been scored. So that well, is a bit harsh, I have to say. We saw Sebastian Negri after the penalty was given making a pushing gesture to the referee, but well, that was. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, Red, we're where, not sure about that. Where's he supposed to go then? Red, you know, Dyer is chasing the ball there, chasing the ball carrier, and gets taken out by the Italian defender. So, you know, it's a harsh one there. Nicotera finds his target again. And Italy look to take advantage of a, a good bit of fortune. Brex just moves it. He does line up with strength from him in that contest with George North. A contest on the floor, and Wales might have won this one. They have. Elliot D. Uh, First guy on feet. He's rewarding the Jacklers today. Matthew right now. You see another one here. It's all very good timing, though. Under the ball by Elliot D. And poor clear out, but. Yeah, it's a hooker against uh, 
a scrum off. Only one winner there. So the clearing kick from Costello. Oh, uh, they're trying to make that angle off the right foot. Nearly lost by Lorenzo Pani. A mistake by Sam Costello. Just talking about that, John, when you're saying he's rewarding the Jacklers today, are you able to sense as a Simone, player how the referee is Simone. playing things in the game and say, right, OK, we can push a little bit more in this? I think so. And, and certain refs have certain characteristics. Nigel know better than I do, but you certainly feel it at the start of a game where we can maybe push it slightly more. He's rewarding the Jackler, certainly has deemed to be early Simone. on in the game. The Wales try and get them all going for the first time in this game. Held at the back, as it always is in a mall by the hooker. Elliot D just says to Thomas Williams, you have a go. Oh, and then an ugly spill by Tompkins, and that's bread and butter. Well, that's, you know, it's, he's standing so far away, the length of the pass, OK? Like, the ball is dying on him anyway, right? But the length of the pass gives the defensive line time to come up, and they're not, get, you know, they're not even playing flat to the line to hold defenders. And then he just gets walloped for it. I think so far in this championship, Wales have, in all their games, put together good spells of rugby. Yeah. Warren Gatlin wanted closer to 80 minutes. So far, the, the opening 15 minutes and a bit more has really been Italy's. I think they've just got to, you know, they're a little bit clunky at the moment. They've got to get, you know, more together, a bit snappier, you know, being... The execution has to be better because if they're, if they're not getting over the game line, execution is poor. They're just handing possession Set. over to the Italians. Now stay square, stay square, Luzette. And uh, eventually goes at an angle, and the decision is given to Italy. Tight head, on the ground. Tight head is the man penalised, Dylan Lewis. Stay, stay square, OK? No, it's not you, but... We saw again last again, week when uh, Italy were effort, playing Scotland, in particular in the second half, their the scrum looked Levanta really robust. Yeah, Dylan Lewis actually made a big difference last week when he came on. He played 32 minutes and came on at a time when the Welsh scrum looked like it was a danger of disintegrating, but he scrummed well in the opening exchange of this game. You'll see here, he goes through, yeah, he cranks the bind down there and ends up on the inside of the scrum. So Giacomo Nicotera, the Benetton hooker, again, seven of the eight in the pack are from Benetton. And uh, Menoncello alongside Brex, that's a menacing midfield. And easily over the gain line on the first phase. Few players make more past the gain line than Menoncello. Oh, and That's this good. is lovely handling, and there is Menoncello offloading to Monte Ioanni. Beautiful play, Federico Ruzza up to within eight metres. Advantage. Advantage to Italy as well. Varni, the scrum half against four forwards. Advantage. So Italy with this free play here. The ball is not quite there for them yet. Now it is, the pick can go. Ruzza again, almost on his own to the line. Cries of Italia from the stands, the stretch still a metre short. Still with that advantage. Forwards clap and call for it. And they go short oh, again. Lamaro thumped down. Still they go through the forwards. Still they have that advantage. Can Wales keep them at bay? Nicolo Canoni goes this time the second row. Now it moves to Brex, now it moves wider. Now Monte Ioanni, free and through. What a start by Italy. And Wales in real trouble with 20 minutes gone. What a superb try by Italy. You talk about a gain line early, a really small hit round the corner. We call that a 21 play, two hits the same way, one way back, but that ability with Brex take the ball flat to the line, the ball out the back, and Garbisi's pulling the strings, and when they get through, offload, 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 power game, and then their ability to find their structure. Again, you see here, it's Brex takes the ball so flat, and this is beautiful, Minicello offloading, Ioani offloading. But at this point, the hardest thing is to look up and see where the space, they managed to get out of the tighter exchanges, another flat pass. The late ball by Garbisi to Ioani, who's recycled himself. What a great try. Well, the ball out the back is causing Wales loads of problems, but great offload, you know, in the tackle on the left-hand side. And they have patience, and they know they're short, and again, you know, it's uh, it's Brex that is doing a lot of the damage with the tip-off pass with Garbisi going on the corner. And Wales can't handle it at the moment. There is creativity and class in the Italian attack at the moment, and Garbisi now for the two... Oh, 
Horrible kick from Paolo Garbisi, but everything else has been top-notch from the Azzurri so far. Yeah, anyway, I just watch. It's the call. It's out of the back. They step in. Yes, there's a trip there, but they created the numbers anyway. It's a very lovely finish. Blindside winger comes across to create the extra man. Great angles are running, but again, it's the ball out the back that's asking a lot of questions about the Wales defence. They look far more organised than Wales at the moment, far better coached, if anything. 13 tries and 30 caps now for Monte Ioanni. And Italy feel that restart well. Oh, and Negri having a chat with somebody who's down on the far side. Oh, it's uh, Alex Mann. The two blind sides coming together, but all is well now. No, no. How important was that conversion? Because that was the, the easiest kick of the afternoon for Garbisi. And that's when he blows hot and cold, isn't it? When he's hot, he's hot. When he's cold, he's poor. It's yeah, an easy miss for him. We shall see at the end of the game, but it may well. At the moment, though, Italy are, uh, are bossing things on the scoreboard, on the pitch. There's a real good level of control as well. I oh. guess the criticism you could leave at Italy over the past Italy. six nations is that they get a bit Italy. excited. They don't exit well, Italy. they don't kick game. The kick game's poor, Italy. but actually, look at the quality of Stephen Varney's kicking, Garbisi's kicking. Spot on so far. Well, Matthew Reynal was telling Italy to have that gap in the line out. They wouldn't move back, so free kick to Wales. What do we do? What was the problem with the last one? Sorry, sir. Tight head, go on the ground. just chatting to Matthew Reynolds, saying, what was the problem at the last scrum, scrum, to be precise? And he was told. Yes. Interesting, they're calling for the, the scrum. Well, at least from the scrum, they're, they're getting more Italian players into the scrum. There's less defenders in front of them, so oh. let's see what happens from this scrum. Rich. Dyer's on the inside shoulder of Sam Costello. Tompkins is flat. Set! No. no, says the referee. Just no. We keep a good hit, OK? Keep a good hit. And, yeah. The Italians are looking comfortable, John, because Control the their defensive line they is so solid hit. and they have they haven't okay. been broken yet. And as you said, when they get it, the tip off you in the back, they, they get, they make the break from the first first phase, and the forward just power over and keep momentum. Yeah, they, I think they look, they, they really have a clear understanding of how they're trying to play with the ball, and there's a confidence and a swagger about them with the ball. But equally, without the ball, they look organised. They're not rushing into rocks. They look very comfortable and organised so far. Wales looking for the solid platform. Well, they sort of have it. Wayne Wright and. Williams of the link and Tompkins then hands on good hands as well finds his way to win it for the tackle from Monte Ioanni he was hearing up there to make that hit and Italy will have the scrum again the defence the pace off Sorry. the line and it looked pretty from Wales eventually nice but by, by. it was just easily watched by the Italian defence okay. all the way it's a good pass it's late at the line but Ioanni you watch the key there as he moves on the ball as soon as the pass is in the air the hardest thing is to actually accelerate and be aggressive but he moves off the, the Costello pass, and that's what makes the difference. It puts the next pass under so much pressure. Well, we've talked about Lewis Liner and Michael Liner, one of the all-time Wallaby greats, and Digby Ioanni, uncle of uh, Monte, is not too, too bad himself, 35 Wallaby caps. Actually, Italy have just moved ahead of Australia in the, uh, in the world rankings. I know world rankings take it all with a, a pinch of salt, but ninth to 10th now, it's just a sign of the progress that Italy are making. There we are. Zyka. <laughs> so now you're playing. Oh, that's Tom on the left as well, younger brother. Now he's just yeah. gone back to play with the Reds, where Michael also played. There we are. He loves being on screen. Good, great player, Michael was. Great player. Well, 911 points when he retired. Yeah, not too bad. Do you play against him? I did. Uh, third uh, place playoff in the World Cup. Yes. We, we beat them in, yeah. So it was a. Uh, but he was a great Aussie side. Mid 80s. I think he might have broken his nose in that match. It was an accident. <laughs> oh dear, such things happened and we laugh about them. There we are. Anyway, a bit of a, well, something to laugh about that. I see Tompkins was feeling that to play. It, immediately. As he went down, apologies, not Tompkins, it's LED, I isn't it, it's going they, down. They just look so comfortable with the ball in hand. And again, instead of using Menachello as the ball carrier, 
They're just play, changing with, with Brex using it, and then Garbisi coming on the onside. Right? Pani's coming in on, on a wider play. angle as well. Okay. They're all getting involved it's in it, and looks so comfortable. Well, El I see Elliot. Elliot D, I think he always got his foot stood on there, shake of the hand, uh, head. Ryan Elias was supposed to play in the last game against France and it was quite a late call off for the hamstring strain, so Elliot D came in and then uh, Evan Lloyd came onto the bench. Evan Lloyd, very inexperienced, but he's on the bench again. Just to remind the rugby league coming up, sixth round of the Challenge Cup. There's one for, for you, Jeffy. Yeah, that'll be a great game. Saints, going well. Yeah. Still Here's doesn't look very... At ease with on. matters, Elliot D. It's very difficult if you're feeling something in your foot as well. I mean, the pressure coming through is the hooker. So a bit of a pause and ready to go again. Right. Wales might need a reset, but it's Italian ball. Bang! Set! <laughs> Stay straight, stay, stay like this. That's a good shot by Italy. Penalty coming, you might think, yes. And again, that will give them such a, a boost to the Italian pack as if they needed it. Again, complete control. You look at the way Italy have played in this half and rarely been under pressure, rarely look flustered. The nuts and bolts, the foundations of their game, how they exit, their kicking game, the scrum line, it's all been very good so far. And just another example, it looked like Schetti there got a good angle on Elliot D and I think, Dylan Lewis there. I think this is a huge moment for Wales, you know, so early in the game. The scrum has been, you know, destroyed, so the referee is uh, edging towards Italy. And now the field position, and if every time they've attacked in the first half, they've come away with some points. So, a huge part of time for Wales. Oh, oh, and then the, the mistake of the line it actually works quite well, though. Varney sees his opponent. There's a great touch kick from Paolo Garbisi, who's offering his protection there. And now the forwards, and now there are options either side, but every Azuri player really wheeling to the left, except for Lewis Lineup and Brex. And there is the loose head for Schetti, the only man not of Benetton in the pack, the Zebra loose head. Crossfield kick, Lewis Lineup waiting out there, it goes horribly wrong, and Lurio dies. Can't quite control it. Liner scoops it up, and Dyer claims him. But then Pani moves it on. on Menicello tries to use his strength, but he's stripped to the ball. Now, if Wales can move it swiftly, oh, it's all rather laboured and clunky. Alex Mann still, carries it in. Still on here, though. So Wainwright shifts it. Now Thomas Williams just delays. Goes himself. George North on the inside. North trying to weave his way in field. Josh Adams is there in support. Wales to the 22, and the noise rises, penalty to Italy. Great, great back He's row play ball. that is. He's first on the ball. That's a get out of jail, you look, that's the oh. best we've seen Wales, but you talk about, I was going to say before that, Wales being guilty of not playing on top of the defence, but actually it was a break from Thomas Williams, who's up against Nicotera, and he saw it, he saw the mismatch and just played right on top of the gain line. You see it here, yeah, the look at the mismatch, feet. three on two, we just play. put the hammer down. And then once you get in behind teams, it's so much easier. George North carries very well, but Lamaro does exceptionally well to go over the ball there. There were uh, two great back rowers there we saw, Reffel stripping the ball, Lamaro doing the work at the breakdown. He's an uh, inspirational captain. But you've got to think, what was Garbisi thinking of with that cross kick? You know, they were in a, in a good position, they had numbers outside. Numbers. And Rio Dyer did a good job, in, you know, stay, holding his width against Liner. Who can say what fills fly half's heads? They're full of fanciful notions and grand <laughs> dreams. Sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. The Italian lineup works well again. Nicotera, the hooker, looping round, but it's loose. The nutmeg there. Still with Italy, though, went backwards. Use it! Thomas Williams summoning Welsh defence to this side. And now Costello comes over. Use it! It all slows again as Vanny told to use it. And it's a long while before he does so. And just a little bit too much on the kick. So Josh Adams able to take a great chase by Monte Ioanni. Good work by Adams, though. Oh, step back. 
No. Just, just thought they could have gone the left hand side then, because Fischetti was there in the, in the centre position. There was a chance for him to go at him. He's still there. He's still there in the inside centre position. <laughs> Adam Beard sort of creeps that way. But Italy able to set their defence a little bit more solid now. So we talk about the pace of the, the game. And Thomas Williams taking all the time in the world. And uh, the chase is on. It's a very poor kick down the middle of the pitch. Good take by Garbisi. Options. Use it. So this is a rather ponderous passage of play here from both yeah. sides. Yep. So the kicking contest, and there's a bit too much in that from Varney, because it'll land inside the 22, and Thomas Williams will call it for the mark. And away he goes. Sends it away of Varney over his head to Garbisi. Well, they're just comes. Oh, oh, no, dear. That was nobody oh, calling. Confusion. Win it in Costello. Now have the debates, but that has cost Wales dear, and it'll be a scrum to Italy inside the 22. All these little errors. You know, that's a poor kick by Gazi, as, as John off. said. You know, and that is. Sub. I think it's Costello's ball because he's running onto it, but no one shouts. It's a knock on. It's a schoolboy error. And now the inquest begins, but uh, and you think of how well Italy did in the last scrum. They're actually going to make a change because Nico Terra is going off at hooker for an HIA, so he's replaced by Gianmarco Lucchese. So that's just for an HIA for Nico Terra at the moment. It's okay, off now. And there is uh, Lucchese. There's a there's a, a giant oh going around the stadium as uh, as he or she I do not know is shown on the screen. You look at this scrum here, and I thought Wales were very, very lucky in the last scrum. It looked like Italy were dominant, but watch Wales, all the Wales eight stood still, and then Italy stepped around right. and then drove Wales around, and they won the penalty through that. So Bye. should have gone the other way. It'll be interesting what they do on this one. And creating that picture in Matteo Reynal's head, the referee keeping a keen eye. Yes. Down it. it goes, but told to use it. Varney now down the blind side, over the head of Garbisi, and here is Lorenzo Pani. Not the initial attack that Italy wanted to create. Canoni, the number eight, carries it in. There is Brex just shoving it on to Lamaro. Wales think they might have turned that over, but no, still with Italy. Garbisi just prods it through in the, the chase by Pani. Can't quite hold on to it. Well, again, the variety from the Italian attack. Switch sides. It's a lovely little kick. Bones just didn't help him, but the variety of just Scrum, asking captain. questions that we have defence Scrum all the now. time. It's a good weight on that, isn't it? Yeah. Sits up right to Pani there. We would have liked to see Italy hold on to the other potential. They look so dangerous, multi-phase, yeah. you know, given the context of where they are. 30 minutes into the game. Italy don't challenge at this line. They prefer to put the pressure on now. And there's Alex Mann. He's a bright talent. So Warren Gatlin wants him just to add a bit more weight, which he will. Now Thomas Williams again teases it back through the legs of his forwards. And a decent enough clearing kick. Yeah, and they're happy to get it off the park for a minute, have a breather. But if you're Italian, as John said, you'd be disappointed that, he, that Garbisi kicked a yes. If it had come off, it'd been brilliant. But in. building the pressure, that's all they need to do. Keep in. the ball, they're looking very, very comfortable. You know, 11 points ahead. I just took off my headphones to have a listen because sometimes they can they can lie to you in terms of the effects. But there's a, there's a sort of general murmuring and mumbling around from 73,000 people. Ruzza takes it, a few in the crowd thought that wasn't straight, but Lamaro moves it to Varni and Ioanni. Changing the angles. Negri. If they've option, opted for the 21, we saw even the, the coming back there, second, third yes, phase, they obviously fancy themselves coming back against the grain. And here they come, three phases this time, and then they come back. Just keep a, a keen eye on how much ground they make 
around the gain line. And there they are. There's Whoa. a bit made by Lorenzo Canone, but Wales are spared on this occasion. Shifted by Dylan Lewis, and now it's just so deep inside the 22. There's confusion in the Welsh side here, and Tompkins just wandering around and gives it to win it. He's now trying to skip his way out of trouble. Penalty, though, to Wales. High. But that passage of play really showed that Wales are not quite at it today because there was clear confusion. Well, yeah, two forwards in, the, in that passage of play, and when they had the ball in hand, it, it looked as if they've never seen a rugby ball in their lives before. So, uh, you know, they've just got to keep their composure and awareness. That won't help. Oh. Oh, Lina keeps it in. A couple of missed touches from penalties, but no, it was. It was. It's actually it's worked pretty well. Yeah, they just got to just, just calm down a little bit, Wales. Yes, it's a turnover, and they try and go for it, okay? But you can't just throw the ball about when there's a defensive line in front of you. Decision making is key. Well, it's a bit messy at the line now, but here is a, an opportunity. Tompkins just gives it on to Alex Mann. And North. And the crowd willing him on. There is Lewis, spin from the tight head, well watched by Tommaso Menoncello. And Gareth Thomas. Again, they've just taken it up. One player. So North comes in to receive and to send it through and get uh, Will some field position. It's a good kick by George North, but it does feel like there was no other option there. Not managing to find their shape in attack against what has been a really organised Italian defence, but it's the right option there. Well, looks like it might be a 50-22 they're asking for. But no. It's a good kick if you compete for this now. They've got to compete for it. They're just going to have a look at the kick to see if it was. Was he inside his own half, George North? No, they checked it. It is Italian ball. More than a few cries of Wales, Wales. They're trying to lift the home side. Only five minutes to go in this first half. Dominated, bossed by Italy. Lamaro's carried well, hasn't he? He has carried well. Open sider, one turnover as well, Jackal. Josh Adams, well, knew he was going to take that hit from Negri and Monte Ioanni. And there is Gareth Thomas. Thomas Williams tries to get the speed lifted and riffle. A little bit quicker for Wales now, Tompkins and then the standstill from Costello. It's a poor pass, just takes every, uh, oh. all the pace out of the game. Wainwright tries a little blubber and chase himself, and out she goes. It's one of the few times they've actually created quick ball, two, three phase, oh, quick ball. Off what was a pretty good kick by Varney, but then it breaks down just at that crucial moment we here. The line out. I don't want to see anything. Almost Next playing in ones and twos. Okay. A real lack of cohesion we're seeing. Line out. It's very difficult to see what they're trying to the achieve pass. in attack, you know. Red. There's no tip off passes. There's a lot of one ups. Blue. 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 One, one up carries. Italy have not setting the line out very well. Matthew Reynolds having a long word again, contested there. Wainwright trying to get up, but Lutza got it down. And it's now held at the back by the replacement hooker, Lucchese. And Varney has a little look, and he just took a bit of time. You hear the slap of ball on hand, charged down. Garbisi Stop. frees himself. Play on. And Dyer waits. There's the buzz as Rio Dyer, what can he create? Tries to make his way around Brex, if Brex doesn't get you, Menoncello will. What a read by Brex there, and then the counter up that follows, they've been turned over. Now it's loose, anybody's to claim, and Lamaro gets it back to Ruzza. Knock on, knock on, turn over. Well, a chance to try and create something down this side, George North. Negri got him down, and the ball is still there, and no, Tompkins buddy. comes in to play scrum half. Back and then the spill off. by Jenkins. There's so much space here, look at Nicoteras by himself in the middle of the pitch. Yeah. There's just 
Stays with the forwards and a little bit of a stutter before Gareth Thomas gets going and then it slows. So Williams again, Monte Ioanni waiting to field this one. Nobody can take it yet. And uh, Negri is there. Penalty though to Wales this time. They'll be desperate to take something from this half. And now might be their opportunity. Uh, they're, they're, win they're winning all the second bounces, aren't they? The Italians at the moment. Okay, that's fine. Just a little bit more eager. Maybe Josh Allen a little bit lucky to get away with that. Yeah. Maybe he should have let Sebastian Negri get back on his feet. We've seen right now really you, 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 don't have, you don't have to let him get back on his feet. All you can't do is keep him. You can't dive on him. So he doesn't have to let him back up. So the referee was right in that penalty there. And Wales deciding not to go for the three points. It would have been a tough one, sending it not to the corner, but at least into 22. There was hardly any angle for Costello to, to work with off his right boot. So now, two minutes remaining in this first half. And Elliot D goes long and hits his target. Wainwright. And there's Tompkins. Oh, and then the spill of the ball lost immediately. And all the noise and excitement just deflates inside the stadium. They did so much right though there. Threw it to the tail of the line out. No, no, Look at Wainwright takes out Lamaro. Uh, he lead with the minute. ball there. Tompkins leads with the ball against Garbisi. Ah, okay. Yeah, again, you've got to run. You know, again, you've got to run at the arm. You know, you're running straight into someone. You just Garbisi does well to dislodge the ball. But if you if you're going in as the as the ball carrier to get over that gain line, you should like make sure. So, that what, that what ball is wrapped up properly. Yeah. You're going to go to deck and giving your forwards a target to clear out and then to okay. go again Three. and force you. There's so many oh, errors for yeah, Wales. Yeah, yeah. Well, early on in the phases. Yeah, I, I said 11 seconds spent in the opposition okay. 22. 11 seconds of play. Well, perhaps it feels like a little bit more than that. Let's be let's be generous. Sebastian Negri's had some treatment. I will go on your side and I will check that. Okay, I will stay on that side. So again, the scrum just uh, just asking Mathieu Reina. I'll have another guys, look at a, a different side of the scrum. See, a little bit more the weight, okay? On the bike, on the bike, try to control a little bit more the weight, okay? Thank you. Nodding, same, same not really agreeing. agreeing. We control a little bit. You'd have to try and attack this scrum, wouldn't you, John? Try and do something. You just can't allow him to. Okay. The perception is the Wales of. Uh, so it looks like Italy have had the upper hand. Nigel referenced one of them, maybe a bit lucky against Wales, but I mean, what Italy going to do here, really? Kick the ball out, and then Wales get another opportunity. Well, this is Dylan Lewis had that chat with Matty Reynolds and said, Come around my side and see what's happening. He's a very good scrummager, Dylan Lewis. Set! Down she goes again, but the decision goes the way of Italy. Inging, inging, one red. Says I saw it on the other side. Gareth Thomas hinging. Hinging, one red. Nigel Owens. One red yeah, it's, <laughs> it's typical. Once you come down this side, the problem happens the other side. Without well, actually call in by the assistant referee user, he's a fair old distance away to see that, but if he sees it, he calls it in. So there, perhaps the last opportunity, although it was an Italian ball, the scrum anyway, but Italy just looking to see yeah. out this half now, and Lorenzo Pani sends it to touch. Correct. Okay, so keep your elbow up. Gareth Thomas got pinged there. Looks, it looks like the right decision, actually. Hinging. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's interesting. We get a lot of stats before games. Some of them are useful, some of them are not. <laughs> but actually, if you look at the <laughs> Italy have only mauled the ball eight times in the entire championship, and they've so tried to do it there. Well, Wales have turned it over here, so one last chance. Man is had a standstill for a moment and quickly closed down by the blue shirts, but then Tompkins just scurrying around. They're always getting caught behind the gain line. That's deep the behind problem. the gain line yeah, now. Deep. There's Tompkins again, no way through. Now that it was Costello. Oh, and then it was a fumble, went backwards from Thomas Williams. You see where Wales are now, they've had the possession and they're almost back in their own ten. Tackle and roll, thank you. So the clock is red off the outside of the boot, and here is Tompkins, oh, the bounce is unkind. And it's lost, didn't go forwards. Marcos by red, stop. And, and Italy have secured it, and they'll just send this out, I'm sure. Sure they will, yeah. Garbisi had a look at the, the clock. 
And Paolo Galvisi sends it out. A very, very effective first half from Italy. They've scored all the points. They've scored the one try from Monte Ioanni. And well, Paolo Galvisi, a couple of years ago, he kicked the winning points. He may be on a winning side again. Wales in real bother here at the Principality. At half time, they trail by 11 points. Well, that will be a half that Wales will be glad to see the back of, and the stats will not surprise you because Italy dominates everywhere um, in terms of, uh, obviously, the penalties conceded. Wales uh, top that one, 6-3, to three, dominant tackles. Italy, 9. Uh, Wales, 3. Line breaks, uh, 4 for Italy, just the 1 uh, for Wales. And uh, uh, metres made, uh, well, Italy, 270 to Wales is... 210, uh, uh, edging it slightly on carries. And you should say as well, across the past five, six nations, Italy have averaged conceding 183 points per campaign. They're at 105 with just 40 minutes rugby to go. I mean, that is improvement in their defence is plain to see, isn't it, out there? And it's a very anxious Wales who are facing them. Very anxious. I mean, that's the big difference we see with the Italians. Almost it feels like when Sean Edwards went to France, you're seeing Italy always had a huge appetite to attack. Now you're seeing they've got a big appetite to defend. So Sergio said it yeah. before the start of the game. You can see that they're kicking a lot more ball compared to last year in their own half. Just not willing to play rugby in their own half, which used to run them into a lot of mistakes this time last year. They're much more pragmatic, kick out their own half. Their line speed is great and they, their attack has just continued where they left it off. So you put all those things together, those stats sum up perfectly. Wales just haven't been able to get any entries into the Italian 22. Even last week, against France. Wales had two rucks in the French 22 all game. Bear in mind you have maybe 100 rucks on average a game. So Wales are finding it really hard to get territory again this week. That's credit to the way Italy are playing. And all Italy really wants to do is keep building on performances and results. And that must please you enormously that they've done just that on the back of a, a victory over Scotland, a draw against France, a more positive play today. Yeah, of course. I'm not surprised. Uh, honestly, when we see the game, the first 40 minutes, Italy was uh, very good, very good in any single area. Uh, they in attack, they attack him very well, much better than Wales. Good line speed, as Sam say in defence. Uh, no overplay. That's what we were talking before. That's what Quesada bring. Just a good balance. And uh, I don't know. The result, I think, is, is just normal. Just hope they they can have the same accuracy in the second half and bring a, a good victory. Casada said he wanted consistency, he certainly got that. Warren Gatland, what, what has he got in that first 14? Yeah, they're anxious and they're making mistakes. I think they've played into um, Italy's hands a bit. The first 20 minutes they tried to play a bit when it wasn't there. Italy they could then go forward and make the tackles and, and Wales didn't get any territory. I mean, George North had, North had that kick late on. It's probably what they need to do in the first 20 minutes. Defences are always on top a little bit early on. So just, just play a little bit of territory and get down there. So it's been... And then, you know, the mistakes happen and then they sort of compound themselves and um, before you know it, you've, you've made half a dozen mm. and you haven't scored a point. Well, the Ioani try came obviously off the back of some great Italian play, but prior to that, uh, a whole load of Wales mistakes. Yeah, and at this level, if you make a mistake and then compound it with another mistake, you, fi you, find, you find yourself in trouble. So we, here we have the missed touch, okay, it happens. Then, then, then we knock on, then they knock on, then there's a penalty from the scrum. And suddenly you've gone from, should be an attacking line out, to now we're defending and it's and Italy's attack watch watch these plays they doesn't look like there's too much on here you know Wales have got Wales have got more numbers than, than Italy Garbisi's on the right hand side but he comes from right to left very quickly and Menoncello was in the ruck before that he's got himself deeply back and come run straight onto this ball so great work rate he's seen the get he's seen the space and they've opened them up then they offload and they're into the uh, Wales 22 it's that same shape again when uh, this is Brex taking it to the line, he's got a guy outside him on the short pass, and that deep ball back is causing all these problems. And when that happens, I only, he, he straightens up and he puts him straight through. Again, Brex and Menoncello, I think they're the key for this attacking, uh, uh, you know, uh, phase. Uh, Brex is taking every time this ball, uh, running and make the decision at the last minute, and you never know. Either Menoncello take the short pass, either play in the back, and that's that is the, 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 the different. It's, it's what John said in commentary. As a defender, you've got to make a decision. It's not just as one player and I'm going to hit him. And that first pass when they did that shape was, was, was a loose head. Fischetti's made the pass. Yeah. He's the loose head. He's straightened up and it looks very smooth. And suddenly that gap's there and they're through. Sam, the Italian line speed is causing all kinds of problems for Wales. They're just not getting to grips with that at all. Big appetite in defence from Italy, which I'm, I'm loving to see. And Wales are finding it really hard to get any front foot. Italy almost what we call spot blitz. It means they almost send one man, whether it's intentionally or not, 
just to rush out the line as hard as he can. And it spooks Wales. This is a, a fun row forward doing this. They're doing this regularly. You can see how much they're advancing every single phase. They do this for the first two or three phases. Wales then run out of ideas, and they have to sort of, and in this example, shows they kick. Shows again, they set up really well. Jiffy has said in commentary that they're not competing too hard at the breakdowns. They've got lots of numbers on their feet. They're advancing so far every single phase and their effort to get off the line and have this rush defence is massive. And this is what I think Rio Dyer should have done to stop the Wales try. You can't defend everything. You are only highlighted. You're either all in or you're all out. You either sits off or you go and take man and ball. He flies up and he takes man and ball. It's great edge defence that forces a turnover. Wales, in contrast, they sort of win that grey area. He didn't go and take man and ball. He sat off. Yuani went through, so great line speed and great edge defence. So defence across the board has been brilliant. Uh, turnovers as well yeah. uh, for Italy. The jackling's going well. Yeah, jackling going well at both sides. We have uh, some jackals of it from, from the Welsh. But uh, yeah, uh, Michele Lamaro do a big one, a really important one. Um, you know, in our 22. So, of course, as some say, uh, yeah, the defense line speed, but I think as well the the energy they put every time in the tackle, they're starting to stick and fight and win and some extra seconds to, you know, to have the good line. With, with these turnovers, some of them have been brilliant turnovers, they survive clean outs. Some of them have just been poor clean outs from Wales. Yeah. So, I always say when you're watching a turnover like this, look at the clean out. That, that clean out is, is not good enough. You've got to be way more aggressive. You've got to get that man off the off the ball. This is another good example. Lamro, Thomas Williams slips off him. Nick Tompkins is trying to pull him back like a teddy bear. That's not how you clean out rucks. So some of them have been very good jackals, but actually a lot of it's been poor clean out play from Wales as well. Yeah. And Sergio, can we have a little look at the scrum as well? Two scrum penalties for Italy. Uh, you know, a, a three actually, just one right at the end. Three, yeah. um, so the set piece not going very well for Wales, but credit to Italy and, and what they're doing differently. Yeah, uh, just keep working. I think Italy uh, struggled a little bit during the campaign on the scrum um, against France, of course, against uh, Ireland as well. But they keep keep, keep trying to keep working. Uh, if you see Fischietti, Ferrari, uh, Nicotera, they're not a, a, a front row with a lot of experience, but they just keep um, believing on the process. And, you know, uh, uh, physicality is there. I think the the bench, the Gonzalo Quesada chose six two in the bench. I think they have, have some some players in the second half with some fresh energies. They talked about belief, didn't they? Building belief that they can come and do this. And now that half, they've done things they don't normally do, get scrum penalties, got three of them. Yeah. Everything is, is working for them. The big challenge now for Italy is they've got a big lead. They're not used to that. You know, when you're going at halftime for any team with a big lead, it can be quite awkward. Well, what do we do now? Keep on going. So they've got to manage the second half come out well they will expect Wales you'd imagine to come at them with something different in the second half but the defense is so strong the line speed is there so they, you know they will think that they can cope with whatever Wales have got yeah you know Wales look not very dangerous actually with one hand Freddie for Italy but they think they can do better in attack uh, you know I think Wales uh, show against Scotland that they can, can come back and can you know uh, you know have a, a good second half so obviously ago, Italy don't <laughs> yeah exactly well, you have to you have to get they've taken the initiative We've seen their defence and their attack take the initiative in this game. They've got to do it again in the second half. And if there was one moment, perhaps, that kind of summed up Wales, Sam, in that first half, Nick Tompkins, Wales finally uh, in the Italian 22, had uh, what you felt like was the you know, best chance, perhaps, of, of creating something here. Like I mentioned just a, a few moments ago, Wales haven't had many rucks. Some things you can credit the Italian defence, which has been excellent. But a lot of it, you just say, is, is unforced errors. Garbisi's shown great energy there as a back, just to get that, that contact rip. But that does sum up Wales's attack and effort. It's been turned over way too many times when they've had the ball. And for Italy, half-time, this is the easiest team talk that they'll ever have. It's exactly the same tactically, but just make sure you bring that emotion and energy still for the second half. OK, uh, let's take a little break for a moment, but there's lots coming up on the BBC to look forward to. So how was your day? Before the new series starts, watch all episodes of Blue Lights on BBC iPlayer. Well, Rugby Special will have all the action and analysis from the final round. Hugo Monia is joined by Sam and John Barkley, BBC Two, at 6 o'clock tomorrow. Slammed, the story of Welsh rugby in the 80s is available on the iPlayer right now. And BBC Sounds is your home for the Rugby Union Daily Podcast. The Women's Six Nations kicks off next weekend. Wales-Scotland is live on Saturday, BBC Two at 4.30. And then it's Italy 
against England on Sunday. This game belongs to all of Victory in France, first time in three years for them. The reason I mention it, not just to congratulate England, though, but if you have a look at the final table, you'll see uh, uh, Wales ended up um, second from bottom. Scotland uh, without a win the whole tournament. But Wales came back uh, last night, Sam, from 15-0 down against Italy. A, a big second-half performance uh, from them. I'm not suggesting we bring them the entire team in to take on Italy in the second half, but, you know, inspiration nonetheless. So you're telling me there's a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> but Wales, absolutely, like Sergio said, rightly in round one, Wales actually play better almost now. When they come out, they're 11 points down. Well, if you give up the penalty and you're 14 points down, it's not that big a difference. They're almost better when they go behind. So I think Italy would be very wary of Wales. You know, when Wales are playing off nine, off tight, one, two pass rugby, Wales aren't that physically dominant. They're better when they go into the 15 meter channels, play wider. So I expect Wales to try and find that space in the second half, and Italy will be wary of that as well. Uh, we know the last 20 minutes uh, was where it all went wrong last week, and the replacements came off the bench for France. But Wales uh, have only got 41 minutes of international rugby in their three front row players, uh, Martin, on the bench. So you know, a real imbalance again in terms of experience. Yeah, and Italy, Italy's bench did well last week. They came on, they got penalties against Scotland. I tell you, I think this uh, Vincent on the bench for Italy has got some pace as well. So it may be that Italy have a, have a stronger bench to come on as well if they want to use it. They do have uh, talents like Mason Grady to bring on. He could perhaps be mercurial and, and make a difference. They're going to need some magic. Yeah, they're going to have to. And I think the bench, they're not there just to play if there's an injury or just to fill in. The bench, uh, their job is to come on and elevate the game, whether that's with physicality, whether that's with tempo, with decision making struggled to do that in the weeks gone by so when the bench come on you just got to think your individual role is to make an impact if you do it as a collective then you have a good influence on the game he talked a lot about oh, warren this is talked a lot about pressure pre-match and obviously they are under pressure they don't want to finish you know their worst finish for 21 years martin but a lot of those young players who is trying out this is enormous pressure and at the moment that they're, they're not standing up to it you've got they? to earn your money now as a coach at half time 11 you know down at home you haven't scored things are going wrong they need to settle down. If they make those mistakes again, they won't win. So you've got to cut the mistakes out. And that's the hardest thing to do because no one's doing it deliberately. Italy on the just, precipice as well. Of... Yeah, just get a grip of yourselves, get yourselves into the game, score the first points and go from there. Italy uh, on the edge of a greatness, their greatest ever Six Nations. Yeah, of course. Uh, and the game is not finished. Uh, as, as I said before, I think Italy have a massive, massive challenge now in the next 40 minutes. But yeah, of course, a win today will mean our best best nation ever. That's the table as it stands and uh, that would be an enormous leap forward, enormous progress for them under yeah, Posada. Absolutely, but they've got to do it. They've got 40 minutes now. You know, the, the first half of internationals, but the last 20 minutes is, is where it's all at. That's where the games are won and lost. So just keep doing what you're doing. Play with that intensity. You don't have to force anything. Just do what, do what you're doing, but that intensity has got to be there. Call me glass half full, but if I was a Welsh coach now, I'd actually like this situation because this is when you find out who your big game players are. When the pressure's on, the strong survive and the weak will fall. So you want to see who are your key decision makers now, who are going to grab this game with a scruff of the neck when you're 11 points down, who's going to be the key decision makers, who's going to step up for big moments and attack and D, who's going to be accurate. This will tell Warren a lot about his squad, I think, in this next If half. this Six Nations is all about learning about those young players, then certainly this is a big lesson coming out here right now. And similarly for Italy, you know, it's been said they're normally in touching distance, maybe chasing a game. They've got to compound this lead. Yeah, of course. And uh, again, uh, some say something really important, I think, from the Italian side, when you see and you, you have 40 minutes to go, you must think and you must be cold in your mind. And that is something difficult for an Italian, <laughs> for an Italian build. So hope to see 40 minutes of a great break. Well, like we see three. a cool, calm and collected Azuri in the second half. What have Wales got uh, to hopefully turn the tide for them and ensure that this is not a wooden spoon Six Nations? Let's hand you back to Andrew Carter, Jonathan and John. Well, first things first, I can't see any changes at half-time on either side. I think that also Nico Terra is back on after his HIA for Italy at Hooker. So, huge 40 minutes. I think it's a huge 40 minutes for Gatlin as well, because he's got to use his bench, and I think you've got Will Rollers, Martin McKen uh, McKenzie, McKenzie Martin there, who are ball carriers. We're not getting any dent in the Italian defensive line, so you've got to think about them too. Also, Checking it, Mason Grady, now he carries the ball well, so it's all about the replacements and when he makes them. Because Wales are chasing it. 
taken down safely enough for a way. A massive 40 minutes here, and it just simply has to be better. So Adam Beard oh, no, stop. Only one. provides one the cover off. with his long limbs and Thomas Williams. To send up the kick no, again. Four. Stop. Thank you. And you can't at this stage be drawn into a panicky chase of the game, just get the basics right and build from there. Comes back nicely, a good chase by Josh Adams. Tucker, roll. Ball is there, ball is there, available. Even that was a great opportunity to put out the ball at the back and play on top of this Italian side. But instead, he slows down and next phase, your only option is to kick the ball. So Costello sends it the way of Garbisi and then it finds huge acres of clear ground Costello again and the one sport Galbisi can run on to this one tries to skip his way around a Rio Dyer just gets him down the wing Sebastian Negri always offers that big ball carrying option Silvani and win it Taken nicely by the young fullback. I think he's kicked well today, Varney. Put it right down that tram line. Loads of hang time for his chasers to compete. He's so slow again, there's no pace. Putting it Use into it. the ball carriers. You know, when you carry the ball, you've got to have an injection of pace and move, maybe quick feet. Think of how exciting a scrum half Thomas Williams is, but today's role is to. Send it to the skies time and time again. Varney complains, but the ball is there for him anyway. Once more, Negri. Use it. A familiar pattern in the opening exchanges of this second half. Win it, waiting again. As soon as he takes it, he's clean, but the ball is there. No options down the blind side. Rio Dyer shut down quickly, and his kick half charged down. and. Eventually came off, well, I thought it came off him and into touch, but it will be Welsh ball. I've got a feeling that the Italians just said, I tell you what, we'll just give Wales the ball, we'll defend and see what they can't break us down. And that's, that's what it seems to me, and Wales have got to put pace and momentum, Wales, you know, and intensity into the ball carrier to try and gen There's no deception anywhere in the Welsh play to make defenders think. Now what is there through Costello? There is another ball high and cross field. And the challenge is good, and Tompkins eventually gets it. Josh Adams was the man getting up there. The Wales try and find the angles and the, the runners. Elliot D. And Alex Mann. A couple of tries in this championship so far, but nobody on the Welsh side looking close to the try line today. There is David Jenkins, the skipper. Uh, Italy felt that was forward, but For me, flat, huh? nice. flat says the referee as Adam Beard almost overran it. Now back, back on side. Win it. Oh, and then oh. delays the pass, and now Rio Dyer, what can he create here? He can find Thomas Williams. Williams dancing around the Italian defence. Rio Dyer has to come in, but the Italian rear guard sets itself again. So here the crowd has stirred into life. And now Wales move at a bit more pace about their players. Costello carries. A rare visit to the Italian 22. Down the blind side they go. Man has it now. Necro. Ah, yes. penalty to Italy. Necro is seen. Necro. Necro. And it comes to a judging halt. Oh, that's a, that's a momentum killer. Net roll. This is a break. Just watch it with Net here. He goes up the wing and he holds the last defender and then puts Dyer away. Great support as ever. Barney gets caught ball watching in it that does, white channel. Does. He's not aware it's of the, the, the player you. outside him. The that's Adam point. Beard with a neck roll and roots up. Yeah, yeah, it's a clear one, isn't it? And you can hear just in that also oh rare Welsh attack what it means to the crowd and then with that noise from the crowd that will lift the players it's a sort of symbiotic relationship but there hasn't been enough of it in this game for Wales 
I think it's, it's going to be a little bit careful. They go into a game now with 35 minutes to play, and they're going to a kicking game. And it's not something they're accustomed to. We're seeing the space opening up. Wales aren't isolating it, but there's still a long time to go to just shut up shop and kick the ball. Just to say, that was a very clear net roll, and Monte Ioanni now has Lorenzo Pani. Pani, Lina inside, Pani all the way! Oh, Lorenzo Pani! What a glorious try for the fullback. Two years ago, it was Ange Capuozzo weaving his way around. Today, it is another fullback, Lorenzo Pani, and that is a great try for the Azzurri. That is a brilliantly well worked try. They know they've got. You know, just the edge over the Welsh defence. Again, it's a couple of clever plays. It's a deception that makes the defence make decisions. There's the first one. Again, he straightens up. The blind side wicket comes in. Ayoni puts the ball away. Great support on the outside. That's it. Go in, go out. Bang, bang. Lovely step, and he's over. A beautifully created try by the centres, the inside backs. They hold the defenders, and this is great finishing by Parney. It is a great finish, but again, you talk about the impact Ioanni has, the timing of his run onto the ball there, and then knowing more for his running, but his distribution, actually seeing the ball, seeing the space. What a great finish that was by Lorenzo Pani. When you have Brett and Menocello, just what they're doing, they're holding the, the Welsh defenders, and Ioanni is the extra man. But he'll, be a, he'll be so happy, what a finish. To see that come off, training, movement, brilliant try. And Paolo Garbisi. Well, it was a try that deserved the conversion. Seven pointer for Italy. Look at that scoreline here in Cardiff. Italy, 18 points in front. Just show how they hold it. A long pass again. Again, out the back behind Garbisi. You've got a forward also to hold the defenders. And it's a brilliant finish. Well, both the tries that Italy have scored have been high, high quality. Lorenzo Pani, the 21-year-old Zebra man, in for Ange Capuozzo because of his broken finger. And then look at Lamaro on the restart. He's made eight, ten metres there. Use it, Italy. Just gets that kick away, Varney, beyond man. Well, as, as Jono said in studio, you keep playing as you are. You get the first try or first points, and they've done it. Now it's up to Wales to really chase this game. They have to change it, they have to change, and I think the bench is vitally important because there's nothing happening. Now, is there something here? Rio Dyer. And nobody chasing that one as he sent it through, and Pani had a little bit of a, a juggle with it, but just clear as well. Just hold on to it there, hold on to it, run in field, go through the phases, Changes being made. Uh, Wales are going to uh, bring on Mason Grady, and I think that's a change that probably has to be made now. Well, they're not doing anything at the moment. They're not asking questions. One thing about Mason Grady, he is big, he is strong, he is quick, and he's going to ask questions. Just, just if you're stand off there, I just say, get off my shoulder here and just take this ball in, get over the gain line. Give us, give the forwards some targets, Mason. Now, the curious thing is that Italy's performance okay. at the World Cup now just seems even Turn more bizarre. I mean, losing 96-17 to the All Blacks and 60 points to 7 against France. I think they threw that. They, they weren't going to get out. They used it as a training session, I think, for this. Oh, there was a happy camp, was it? No, in the last days of Kieran Crowley, there was a sad oh. end to his tenure. To Penalty to Wales. To so really have to build from here, send this to Let the corner. He's got a fine touch here. They got 12 blue, too far away. Oh, and has he, has he bitten off too much there? He has. That's three missed touches from penalties. He was just trying to get them. That's desperation, trying to get them too far down. I, I knew it straight away. It was a difficult kick, going for yardage. And also, he's kicking the other way. With the curve of the ball, it's best to come this way. Yeah, that was a long way to touch from the centre of field, but you take yeah. all that into account. Wales do still have ball, though. Now they're moving. Held at the back by D. Thomas Williams goes digging. And the Josh Adams thought he saw nobody at home down the blind side. 
Adam Beard. And again, what can they take from the 22? That's better play from Wales. Brown made. Again, Edley just able to slow it for a fraction. Mason Grady spills. And Ioanni won't come away with it, so they'll get that scrum. They're still playing on with that advantage. Oh, and there's a high hit coming in as well on Menoncello. Oh, it's a penalty now. I tackle here. There's a scrum where they could have put pressure on, turned into a penalty. I shot, yeah. Right. I think I Mason tackle. Grady lost the ball in contact. A bit of frustration. It's a high shot. It's a sort of deafening hush around the stadium. Oh, OK. No scrum. Pani using his left boot. Good. High shot. Time off. So more replacements are being prepared. Substitution. I see Italy are waiting to bring on a, Nine, a new tight three. head. Time is off. Nine, well, bringing eight, on and three, uh, blue. There we are. All, all changed because there's Martin Pajrello nearest to us, who's coming on for Stephen Varney at scrum half. You got uh, Ziloki is coming on at the tight head. Uh, and also going on number 20, Ross Vinson, the Exeter man, the back rower. A fascinating story. Which we might get a chance to tell. But uh, the 21 year old who's taken a, a curious route to the, the blue jersey. We're looking at Zilocchi there, the tight head is on. And Martin Pajrell, scrum half, gets his first touch and gives it to Vincent. Oh, and there, are, there was a bit of confusion there, that knock-on, but Wales have it anyway. Vintage, knock-on. Rare mistake from Italy in this game. Now the dog leg appeared, but then lost forward. But the advantage was still being played. They'll come back for a Welsh scrum. First knock-on blue. Everything has been so tidy from Italy, and there was just yeah. a confusion about whose ball that was there. Canoni gets in the way, does he? He's trying to get almost gather with that passing lane, and Pizzarello gets it just off his chest. Time off, five red, off please. So Adam Beard is going to go off and Will Rollins will come on. I was quite surprised that uh, Will Rollins, you know, didn't start because he's aggressive, he's big ball carrier. I thought he was one of our best players last yeah. week. I was surprised he wasn't picked originally okay. in the side. Time back on. Yeah, he missed uh, a couple of games earlier after in the championship after his partner gave birth and came back in against Scratch. against France it wasn't a bad game at all it was uh, and he was there to provide that weight and that Fine. Oh, I suppose experience in the second row so he's on now Will Rollins so a lot of the personnel have changed well, the balance of the game shift, it has to now for Wales if they're to come back into it. Thomas Williams finds Mason Grady and he makes ground. That's what he's on for. And Aaron Wainwright. Wales looking brighter, busier, but quicker as well. Win it. Oh, and Italy get the penalty again. It's the work by Nacho Brex, the outside centre. Then you've got to look at the detail of the attack. It's a, it's a two out pass from Costello to the smallest guy on the pitch. You want to see your cam win it to the world in wider channels with exactly. mismatches. Yeah, not, not taking it in. Look, out and half. He nearly gets smashed ball. by Menicello. I agree. Where are your big ball carriers? Well, they carried well the first two phases that you saw. Mason Grady carried well. Then you saw. Um, Wainwright came round the corner, but then it slowed down again. Instead of getting faster and faster and gaining momentum, they went to a one-out game again. Well, they're getting a bit more of the game, if you're being optimistic yeah, about know. Wales at the moment. But there we are, visits to the 22. So six visits to the 22 now, but nothing taken, nothing taken from Nine. those trips. And uh, Roots are able to rise and take that. And then there is Ross Vincent. He is quick, this kid. Oh, He's a serious player. He saw his speed against Scotland last week for the break for, before the tries. Yeah. Proper gas. He's not the biggest, but he's just great feet. 
Zimbabwe born. It was Tom Negri, Sebastian Negri's brother, who actually alerted the Italian Federation to his eligibility. The Italian parentage. Some ground made and again slightly quicker ball for Wales and then crossfield it's almost gone backwards Rio Dyer waiting line up just clutches it from the air beautiful take by the winger and then he's back in to secure that ball and Lamoureux comes into play scrum off roots he stands thoughtfully for a moment and it's so negative from Wales unfortunately isn't it you know you just not go through the phases use it so Martin Pajrello, French-born scrum half, landing that one just outside the 22 and win it. Again, he's fielded the ball well, the high balls, and there have been plenty of them. Let's look at that defensive line from the kick as well. It's a race, isn't it, though, Jiffy? Yep. This is a race. Who gets organised quicker, defensive or, de or attack? Of course, the attack's got to retreat and go forward again. The fence is coming forward, but it's a mentality, it's a work rate, it's an urgency. Little knock on from Paolo Garbisi in the air. The challenge was fair from Rio Dyer, so Wales will have the scrum. And if you have, if you if you know they're gonna shoot out to the line, like as Sam explained at half time, if one if one shoots out to the line, then you've got to attack either side of that, you know, the guy that's shooting up. But they haven't they haven't looked worked that out yet. Just run in pace, run straight at him, and then put a put a little pass. Great take. Great take by Lewis Lyon. You saw Ross Vincent. Yeah, fine, just to continue that's the Ross Vincent mindful, story. Okay. So we look at Lewis Lyon. He's at the back of the scrum there. He's actually still technically employed as a pizza delivery guy in, in Exeter. He's studying at Exeter University. He says he hasn't had a shift in a good few weeks. But <laughs> you don't want to do a runner from him. Bye. Yeah, good tips now. Set. So again, different figures in the scrum, and a real, real advantage on either side there, but here's Winnett again, just delays that, pumps that pass and gives it to North. Oh, is George North down injured? Wales come as 14 men now, out wide he goes to Winnett, liner against him. Can't get that ball back yet. No does. Oh, and George North is still looking rather uneasy as he comes back into the, the line. No, just a couple of gaps starting to appear. Mason Grady can hear the thump as he hits hard. Such a powerful figure. Thomas Williams round one man. No offloads and Wales come. Oh no, step back. Step back still Italy. there for Wales. Williams moves it out wide, Aaron Wainwright, good hands, out it comes. Charge on by Rollins. 12 metres from the trial, and Alex Mann is cut down by Nicotera. There is that rare noise from the stands for the home side. George North. Nice. The Italians have regrouped really well here, though. And suddenly Rollins has to... Inject a bit of go forwards and Italy get the penalty. There's no panic about Italy there. As John said, they reset. They gathered themselves and their defence did their work. Well, that's what happens when you get when you just one out runners there. I feel like we're talking about it over and over, but the impact that has on the breakdown is it means you're having to often go into rocks at different angles. You're not going through the gate, and that's what we get see here penalised here. It's a reasonable carry, but. 14 side entry. Yes, you can only over the ball as a, a lazy clear out by Josh Adams. Yeah, he just comes from the side, he doesn't get behind the back feet. That's an easy penalty for the referee. And they had momentum there. That's the first time they'd created quick ball from the carries of Mason Grady. I'm off, subs. Well, I hope it doesn't end like this for George North. He deserves far better, and he's, One, he's still and six blue. One, good enough two, to and six carry blue. on as subs. Italy look to make One, three two, changes. Six. Couple in the front row and in the back row. This is how North got injured. Menoncello's out. He's a strong guy in the centre as well. There are two heavy figures meeting. I think those, the, the Italian centres have been absolutely brilliant today. I think they've been very good offensively, defensively, and that's what they've maybe lacked in previous 
Six Nations seasons. The creativity has been One good. The aggressive blue. defense has been good. Okay. One and two blue. Yeah, in every good side, and certainly the great sides, there is always a, a fantastic midfield combination. And Italy have that at, at the moment as they make those changes. Spagnolo is coming on in the front row, loose head. We're seeing that across almost world rugby now. The role of that inside centre, Jiffy, now is yeah. as important as the, as the 10. You look at okay. Bondiaki, you look okay. at Jordi Barrett, you look at Dale Endy, you look at all these players. It just Six. takes so much pressure off the standoffs to make decisions. Well, look at the send key the, player, the key player for Scotland player. is Tupelotu, isn't he? He's yeah, the one that's missing him massively. Yeah, they're missing him massively. And he's, he just takes it up, gives Finn Russell the option to carry or to pass. Ah, the wooden spoon waits for one of these sides. So Mackenzie Martin is on for Wales. Good kick. He's kicked so well for a young guy, 21 years old. Looks so comfortable at this level. We saw his brilliant finish for the try, but just his positioning, his kicking game, not scared to really be aggressive with his kicking game. So Lucchese back on at hooker after his earlier HIA cameo. Monte Ioanni, look at that. He's zip. been good. He has been good today. Power. Acceleration off the mark, and Brex and Menoncello side by side drive over. And Pajrillo. Well, there's a bit of a fumble, but regathered. So I've been really impressed with Italy's work at the breakdown. You've got Tommy Rafael in there, the Six Nations top turnovers. Yeah, he's had a rip in the contact, but actually, when you're playing this fast game that Italy are trying to adopt, Use it. your contact skills, your urgency to the breakdown has got to be spot on. So, Pajrello. And your record still intact, John. <laughs> oh, Ioannis yeah. racing down on this one. Just can't quite get to Adams as he took it. Tackle now, tackle. And then Adams is taken by Brex, but gets the ground. There's a scrap going on off the ball. Mackenzie Martin is getting involved in the far side, but peace has broken out. No scrum half there at the moment. That away. You've got to get that away straight away because the scrum half was the one that made the half break. So LED eventually came in and Riffle sets it back now. So Thomas Williams again with the boots. And once more, imperious take from Paolo Garbisi. Checked it. For me, it's play on. The referee is just move. checking something, but. For you? The difference in the pace of the recycling, the rucks. It's the vital component okay, in rugby, being able to have that speed get that ball away more sharply. Use it, please, nine. Well, again, Italy in no particular hurry now, just controlling things into the final quarter. They haven't got to do anything, you know, they've just got to consolidate. It's Wales have got to change the game now. Thomas Williams, oh, look at him Ross Vincent says, I'm not guilty. On the chest says, Never Mathieu Reynaud. Thank you. Oh, and it oh, oh. nearly bounced nicely for Mason Grady, and that is a horrible collision in, in midfield. But Wales looking to profit here as George Roth comes forward. There's so much space right if they go oh, here. They've got to regroup. They've got to They're go slow to... though. And it, it was stopping Time it because off. I think it's Menoncello who's down Time with that off. collision with Mason Scrum Grady. Off here. I think it's Pani. Oh, it's Pani. It is Pani. Again, it was just yeah, it was Lorenzo Pani and Mason Grady. A big lump. Oof. That's a rugby collision. They're both going for the ball there. You won. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh we, clash we, of edge. They should both that. be off for HIA there. The yes, they have to. They have to go off both of them. That, that's your view, maybe not mine. Huh? Yeah, yeah, scrum, scrum. That's a jawbreaker there, isn't it? He's, uh, I hope, I hope they're wanna, both all right, but Pani just copped it uh, right on the... Well, I mean, not? they're not showing that on the big screen. That's why you're not hearing lots of ooze okay. as the, the heads come together, but Lorenzo Pani... I think okay. they could be checking this, mind, because it was head-on-head contact. Put it on the screen, please. OK, so Mattia Reynal, Joy Neville is the TMO, and now the crowd will see it along with the officials. I 
I don't see the, the ball is available. Go on, Nigel. I'm not a team more. No, but you're the referee on you. Go on, get uh, it. Again, what do you think? Uh, I thought you were. <laughs> oh, look at him now. Asking for wide. Well, right. let's listen to Joy Neville and Matthew Reynolds. Accidental, accidental yeah, says Reynolds. Both players going so, for the ball. Yeah, bo both players. That, that happened very quickly. He tried to compete for the ball. And I think that is right. Uh, so and the reason Pani's come off worse is it's a forehead into the chin of Pani. It's like an uppercut. You've just had the system referee coming in now saying, I think it's foul play. Put, put it so you have a different please. view here now with the match official. So they're looking at it again. Let's so listen more. to what they have the to say and what they're looking at. Bo both players go oh, for the ball. Blood's okay. coming from Here Mason it is now, head. Matthew. No, that's happened so quickly uh, for me. For me, you've got to assume both players are going uh, for the for ball. They're slowed down. They're both accelerating into that gap. Both being very brave, actually, to try and get the ball. Okay, we'll stay on the scrum whilst ball. Yeah, it's a good decision, I think. It's a rugby collision. The, the ball, the, the, one of the players aren't, isn't carrying the ball. It'll, it'll come okay, down to if, the, if they thought the Italian, if he could have done anything oh, yeah. to avoid yeah, that head done. contact, and, and I don't think he could have. It was complete accidental and a correct and a sensible game decision by the referee. So there we go, Mason Grady is uh, patched up and Pani is, uh, I mean, the, the fact that both are playing Sorry. on though, but do you think there might be an Blue HIA six. there? Off. Blue six. So this is as it stands, if it finishes this way, listen, Italy are still going to finish second bottom, but just some points difference, think about the ball falling off the tee against France, it would be two wins and a draw, which Italy have never achieved in the Six Nations before. So Manuel Zuliani is on for Sebastian Negri in the back row for Italy. There's still time for Wales in this. They haven't shown anything that might suggest they could do it, but there's still 20 minutes to go. If they're going to do it, they're going to have to get some quick ball. And we saw just as the game was breaking up that Thomas Williams, who's one of the best in the business, his form for Cardiff has been superb. I think someone like him can be really integral to opening apart this Italian defence around the breakdown. The scrum rather goes down in a heap again now a bit of space for Mason Grady to run into again and he has provided some go forward and then Will Rollins getting those legs and arms pumping good interplay good linking now there's space Elliot D back in field to Rio Dyer Dyer skipping free Dyer has the ball Thomas Williams great covering tackle but Wales within four. It's only thing they might have stolen. It's still there for Wales. Still just there for Wales. They've got it. And Italy might have stolen this now. They have. It's Manuel Giuliani had that amazing penalty against France that gave them the opportunity to get the kick, which they missed, but that was him covering back there. Oh, and Michele Lamaro having to clear. Pani saying, give it back to me, or Gabisi is rather. Gabisi, yeah. What the tackle there, though. I thought he was over. Look, it's brilliant play. What's George North? He gets in, gets the pass away, inside Italian. ball, and I thought Thomas Williams is in. Look at the speed of Vincent. What As Vincent the goes, then Zuliani gets back round on the ball. But Thomas Williams can fly, but Vincent had a little bit of momentum with him oh. as well, but that's shifting. Great cover tackle. But that's a lot better from Wales. The creativity, the deception, right, making the them side, the, the defence make decisions. George North available pass Winnett's away. The ball great, great play, the wrong brilliant tackle. So Thomas Williams has Stand seems to off. have injured himself in the effort. And Kieran Hardy is the replacement okay? scrum half. It might be his time. Yeah, Kieran Hardy is going to come on. Yeah, Shane Williams. Wonder if they're, <laughs> wonder if they're all his. Just borrowed them for the day, maybe. <laughs> so there is Kieran Hardy. And Thomas Williams. I mean, he would have thought he was in there as well. Oh, yeah. Sorry? Great, great support stop, player, stop, 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 Thomas stop. Williams. He just runs, you know, runs the, the post. He does runs the uprights. Great support either side. Well, Wales want to get going. I think Thomas Williams might have gone round the back into the dead goal area and off that way, but he's taking the long, slow walk to the touchline. 
Oh, it's a shame for Thomas Williams, but what a tackle by Vincent. What a tackle. You know, great tracking back. Great pace back row. We mentioned, John and I said, the pace that this guy has got. Brilliant, brilliant cover tackle. But again, how many Come times have we on. seen that? The few dents the Wales have made and the penalise at the breakdown, the urgency around that breakdown. Good take of the line out, good ball moving as well. Italy trying to usher them towards touch, but still they're going forward. Wales up to within two metres again. The Italian defence for Wait once up. disintegrating. Wainwright shovels it on and the forwards come again. They need to score now, Wales. They need something to take into the final 16, 17 minutes. Are oh, they going to do it through the forwards? Wainwright's penalty advantage to Wales. Gonna hold their wits now. Carry by George North. Just slows a second or two more. Rollins goes no further. Still they come and still they roll to that line. Being held up at the moment. Have they got it down? No. I think it's yeah, Elliot D. They are going to look at it. Elliot D was at the heart of the drive. Yeah, have you, Matt? I have a player in front of me. I don't see clearly the grounding. So for me, it's a no try, but. Have a look on it, please. If there is no try, I will come back to the initial infringement, which is an offside, and give a penalty kick for Wales. So that was all with a penalty okay, advantage. Okay, so on the decision is no try. Stand by, please. So Joy Neville, the TMO, the has grounding. to see grounding to disprove the no try. Oh. I, I, I mean, the ball was on the ground there, but how was it across the line? And it is their control of it. Yeah. Well, it's on the road the line. The to ensure that there's no time to complete first before we look at the grounding. Yeah, they're going to look here now if LAT was actually tackled. I thought he was, but then I thought he was carried over by the Italian player holding him up. So it would be very unfair to penalise LAT here when he's actually lifted over by the Italian player himself. So the crowd cheer because the ball is down in the line there, but Joy Neville is going to look to see if the tackle was completed before that. We just need to establish whether there's a tackle complete before we look at the grounding matter. So stand by, please. So if the tackle's complete, there can't be that second movement to the line, but as Nigel was saying, it's almost as if Italy, well, carry him back over. But, well, what do you, let's just listen to the uh, Joy Neville's decision. Just asking the director to roll it back more, Matt. OK, quickly then, Nigel, what are you looking for well, here? It looks like Aleti, is he, take, is he taking the ground there? He likes, he's on the ground, but now he's lifted up by the Italian player itself. He's, he's so, by the blue. So that, yeah, that's agreed. what we're analysing. The ball so, has successfully been grounded. Yeah, it's so going to be a try. You can overrule your on-field decision. So, the ball has been grounded. Here, well, listen for the noise so, inside so, the stadium the when this is right? confirmed. OK, thank you. Build the suspense. They don't know, we do. And Wales have a try, and they have 16 minutes to find a way back into this game. But they have a foothold. Elliot D's try. And a big conversion for Sam Costello. He has it, Wales have seven points, the gap 11. What has been the difference in the last five minutes? It's hard, it's hard to say, but just playing on top of that Italian defence there, seeing the space and actually going after it rather than playing with depth. A bit more urgency, they're getting desperate with the ball. It's interesting, Mason Grady just getting across the game line a couple of times. It makes such a huge difference. High tackle coming in on Sam Costello. Well, he's got momentum now, you know. Another penalty given field position. But I agree, it's like, I think Mason Grady's helped in getting over the game line. I think uh, it also Will Rollins has carried the ball exceptionally well. And that's all they've done. They've created quick ball. Yes, yeah, so when we talk about getting across the game line, breaching, getting just a couple of yards more, two, three, four yards more, it just doesn't give the defence 
opposition defence time to set and establish themselves. Line out one well by Wales. And there is Grady again, this time he offers it to others in the carry by the Welsh forwards and Mackenzie Martin clearing out. And Kieran Hardy on at scrum half. Good tackle by Garbisi there. There is Daveth Jenkins and Mason Grady gets it out and here is the great man. Not able to make too much ground there, George North. Mason Grady again carrying oh, defenders with them. Italy have done well here, but no penalty. And that's what happens when you build pressure, you know, you build a pace. Pressure grows and then they give a penalty away. So it's, it's easy field position for Wales now. There's a couple of penalties in reasonably quick succession conceded by Italy. I think there were only three in the first half, and there's two in a few minutes, and suddenly Wales able to build again. Italy got, Italy got to get together here as well. You look at it from their point of view, forcing the breakdown. Their discipline's been excellent, like you said, Andrew. So they've got to go back to their guns and stick to exactly what they know has worked for the first 65 minutes of this game. Oh, and just David Jenkins, and then the spill by Mackenzie Martin gives Italy the scrum. And just that one mistake there, suddenly Italy can regather, take stock, and just break that momentum. It's a momentum breaker. Yeah, it's a you know, silly error, unforced error, which just relieves Italy of you know, the pressure. Let's go, Blue. Which they've put Come themselves on, under Let's go. With, the, with the penalties. Referee Matteo Reynal giving Italy the hurry up here, saying that uh, we've got a player down injured. Menoncello is being strapped up. But uh, referee says we play on. Balance. Here we go. We've got a, a whole new Italian front row going against what will be a very tired Five. Wales front row. Set. Yes, you can I almost guarantee that Italy will be chasing this to try and find that penalty because there is Gareth Thomas and Elliot D and Dylan Lewis been on since the start. And in the second half against Scotland, Italy's replacements were very, very impressive in the scrum. So the hope for the Azuri here might be chase this scrum hard and get the penalty. Bye. Set. Stay, stay straight. Garrett, stay straight. Thank no, that's you. good by Wales, keeping them at bay. And then the pickup by Ross Vincent gives it on deep. And there is Brex. And Brex, he breaches that gain line. Pazrello comes in looking and Garbisi gives it on to Menoncello. He uses that powerful upper body to fend. This is what Italy want, just a few phases to suck the life in the out of Wales Use and it. calm the wind in their sails. Good maturity by Italy as well. The criticism in, in the past is they maybe would have run and run and run, but a couple of phases, take the option, well executed, then exit. Suddenly it is Wales ball, but deep inside their own half, Mackenzie Martin scrabbling forward. Costello, little dink. And the chase was good, the ball couldn't be gathered, now it is, and it's in Welsh hands. Penalty side. though, penalty oh, to yeah. Italy. Offside. 21 red in front of the kicker. And it was Kieran Hardy who, who took it, who was okay. offside. So it's attack. We've seen that a number of times. Low chips over the top of the line, of the trying to combat this really aggressive Italian defence. Twenty-one in front of the kicker. Got for goal here, John. Was a captain. You got to. Yeah. Especially given those missed two points in the yeah. first half. Take it out to twenty-one-seven. Yeah. Two converted Cut. tries. So oh. yeah. So it will be Paolo Garbisi clock as well, up against the clock, he'll be over the 70. He's a, a great kicker himself, Gonzalo Quesada. He was. Nearly 500 points for Argentina. Yes. I think they've uh, improved dramatically offensively, haven't they? You know, the structure that they have, you know, with the two centres, bringing the full-back and Ioni in. 
definitely looks like they've added a level and a layer of complexity and maturity to actually how they're playing and managing the game. Just inside the uprights from Paolo Galvesi, a precious three points to take them out to two converted scores in front into the final ten minutes and Italy are closing in on these unprecedented times in the Six Nations of a couple of wins to go with a draw against France. Just when Wales were starting to build and have all, yeah. the, all the rugby, all the territory in possession. What a good kick that is. It's Pani again. It's amazing how big things in rugby just hinge on those little moments. A knock-on can happen to anyone, Mackenzie yeah. Martin at the back of the lineup, but suddenly it's, it's switched the game. Well, where's, where's you know, a got field position from with penalties? With receiver. And they had to score. Okay. They had to score next. They certainly have to score soon again. Rollins rises to take it and Costello win it. Little pop to North. Oh, flat pass nearly taken by Liner. Rio Dyer oh, complains, but I think Lewis Liner was yeah, justified in going for that. He one. was under the, the post. Line. Nobody Three was steps. touching him there. He just looks ball. up. Oh, he's a, he, he, he a would celebration. Feel, he would feel he'd, he should have caught that. I mean, he, he had both hands almost oh. on it. The scrum alpha two meter more into the sticks. Oh, come on, come on. Must do better. I mean, they'll know <laughs> that that shot is coming after something like that. <laughs> Oh, just smile and it's embrace not, it. It's not mine. Oh, Rio Dyer taking it again, deep. Again, watch that, reads the play again. Oh, yeah. that's Brex getting up on Dyer, and there's the penalty, and that might be the game. It's Garbisi, of all people, not the tens can, aren't allowed to jackal, but again, catch Wales right behind the game line. Too predictable. I just wonder whether Wales could have mauled more or try to tie in some of this Italian defence, try and wear the legs off them, because right now they've become very predictable in the middle of the park. But they kick early, John, don't they? You know, because oh, they haven't got the ball carriers. Look at it, just watch the watch Brex on the outside centre. He spots Dyer, and again, Ioni is there with him, so he can't get the pass away. But Great defence. Yeah, the re but the reason he can spot them is because there's no deception. No, there's none, no pressure on, this, on players to make decisions about what's happening in front of them. So he knows I have a license now to fly out on the ball count and I can ignore what's happening beyond that. So just a bit of extra distance required. Martin Pajrello has a big boot, the scrum half, 42 metres, to take it beyond two converted tries. Oh, what a strike that is from Martin Pajot. He had, had it with room to spare. I, I mean, they're celebrating with seven minutes to go. This is uh, surely a road too far now for Wales to come back. You can't see it, can you? Based on the evidence of today and with the way Italy are playing, the scoreboard against them, time pressure. This kick here was the big one. It's just taking it away from them. Three scores yeah, strike. now. That means a lot. Yeah, that's what it means there. Italians, that way. Well, Wales have suffered precious few defeats against Italy, three of them. This is going to be the biggest if it remains on this scoreline. And in Cardiff as well, hard to take. Stop. Use it, please. The changes have been made in the front row now for Wales. And uh, Johan Lloyd, you saw trying to take that, he's on the field now. And there's Harry O'Connor, number 18, on for his first cap, the tight head prop. Okay, fine. Grab the ball. We've seen some new faces in this championship for Wales. It, has, it is a championship of transition. But it doesn't help when you've got a, a, a country that is so connected to their national side and they want results and performances now, but it has to be about the future. I think so, but uh, you know, there's not many other players in the regions that will break into this squad, so they've got to build and work together. And I think the, they need to find an identity. They need power from One somewhere stop. or deception. And unfortunately, you know, Use neither of now. those have happened today and uh, the Italians have, have controlled the game quite easily. So Evan Loy, the replacement hooker, feeding that ball back. And Mason Grady again just makes extra ground, win it. And once more, Brex was a missile towards him. 
that time he just got away but how impressive Brex has been in terms of defense the outside Not center is often the Not defensive done. leader Brex has been inspirational he has been but his, his ability to move off the pass his relationship with Minicello has been superb and gets a lot of the plaudits but you see the work he's doing defensively to put so much pressure on Welsh attacking players shut down passes be aggressive he's been superb so player of the match as we uh, make some more replacements on the Italian side yeah I think Pani's played well Ione you know he scored one and created another one you know the fours have laid the platform for the half box Gabizi's been very controlling but for me, the standard player and the Guinness Six Nations player of the match is Ignacio Brex. I think offensively, defensively, he has been the standout player today. He's played very, very well. Just a little look at the big screen, saw his face there. I wondered what that was for, but a, a more than deserving player of the match. Again, a few in the Italian side could, could have had it into the final five minutes and again look at that scoreline I thought the penalty was coming we was told to use it and then there was sidestep so it was uh, going forward by nefarious means so penalty for Wales well, again this one will just about find the corner these are desperate times called for Desperate measures, Johan Lloyd has found a beautiful touch there. Well, unfortunately, it's not going to get easier for Wales because they play South Africa next and Australia twice in Australia. So it's a fast, difficult learning curve. Yeah, a hard summer to come. This is being held at the back by Evan Lloyd. Wales need to finish in a high at least here. They've had one stop in the mall. Use it now, 16. Told to use it, Evan Lloyd, a man from Pinar. And so it's Kieran Hardy comes away with him. There is Mason Grady. This time he's quickly shut down by Paolo Garbisi. And Evan Lloyd able to come away with it again. Now, Will Rollins, another who's had a bit of an impact for Wales since coming on. In goes Kieran Hardy. Goes beyond George North, carried by Martin. Still they come through the middle, closer. Advantage Penalty offside. advantage to Wales, Italy offside. Three minutes, find a try now and hope for a miracle. Forwards looking to go again. The drive over the line, do they get it? Oh, did they get it down or was it spilled oh, there? It looked as if it was loose. They were playing with that advantage, so they'll go again. They have to gather themselves for this effort right under the posts. Give it to George North and a hundred yard run. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. We're going to tap this. Scrum's under pressure. Feeds, feeds George. It's Evan Lloyd will pick and go with his forwards behind him. Lloyd almost on his own for a moment there. Then the red shirts roll in. Now they move it wide. But then the tackles come flying up again. Men and Cello doing so well, and Johan Lloyd, and suddenly Wales 10 metres out. Hardy, they get going down the blind side. Pick up and go by Kemsley Matthias. Two minutes to go. Oh, and George North is down again. Penalty advantage again for Wales. Yeah, George North struggled to get up here. Away, doesn't look good. Oh, Mason Grady again, five metres made. George North still down on the ground. Mackenzie Martin still with that penalty advantage. Harry O'Connor has a carry. And again, Wales for the line. Has Wainwright got there? Not quite. Inches. The game is gone. But do they have a second try not yet once again the italian defense working so hard try now is it rollins with it well something at the very end for the stadium to celebrate all the while george north down injured but will rollins again impressive since he's come on and he was at the heart and they do have a second try yeah, they managed to keep the ball. I'm super impressed by Italy's defence. They're managing to hold them out, but 
managed to be patient and powerful and get collected. Well, as a, a conversion to come for Johan Lloyd, and all the while George North, again, not how a great career, one of the greatest careers is meant to end. So, uh, well, the, the contrast here, Johan Lloyd's got to focus on this conversion, but actually he might just stop, and the referee might say, you can have more than your time here. <laughs> because this should be a moment for George North. Johan Lloyd brings it round for the extra two, and the sound of cheers for the conversion will melt into the cheers for this great man it is a well a, a game and a championship to forget for wales but at the end of a career to remember for george north he has been one of the greatest of welsh rugby yeah he's up there he we're very fortunate to have great wingers from jj to gerald to ye and to shane and he is up there with it with the best that have played on the wing an amazing career tries International matches, Lions, what a great player. Well, it's a sad trudge off for George North, a career that began as a rampaging 18-year-old against South Africa. Comes to an end here with him limping off against Italy in defeat, and the clock is red. And Wales do want more Mason Grady again. You look at Grady and Rollins and the impact they've had since coming onto the pitch. Well, a reminder, if Wales were to score, they would finish they would avoid the wooden spoon keeping it within seven points so there is something tangible to chase here if they keep ball in hand and find their way upfield good work by Johan Lloyd little chip over the top will it go to Italian hands will it be over no foot race Mason Grady oh Mason Grady is in Mason Grady is in for the third Welsh try victory will be Italy's but the wooden spoon will also go to the Azzurri. What a finish to this game. Well, what? They've come a lot better because they've got over the game line. That has been the difference in the last 10 minutes. Grady has been a huge difference. Bit of variety, a kick from the scrum half. Grady's pace gets his foot in it. And it's a try, brilliant try to finish. Oh, Caught the... oh in my giddy excitement yeah. to the third try for Wales, I got my maths entirely wrong. Wales are going to finish bottom. There is the wooden spoon. But there we go. What an end to this match. What an end to this championship. It's difficult to sum it up for Wales because for the first time since 2003, they have the wooden spoon and a whitewash. But really, this is a day for Italy to celebrate because they are growing and getting better and making those strides in rugby. They, they were the better side today. They relaxed a little bit in the, in the last 10 minutes, but they were, they were very confident what their approach was. Their line speed was good, their creativity behind. They, they scored some lovely tries by Pani and Ione, and they controlled the game. You know, and they just let it go in the last 10 minutes. But Wales, again, once they got on the front foot, once they got over the gain line, they looked dangerous. But the lack of deception and the lack of power, you know, they couldn't break the Italians down. Quick thoughts, John Bartley, very quick thoughts. I just think if you rewind two years to when Italy won here and the celebrations, Garbisi throwing himself on the floor, there's none of that today. I think Italy expected to come here and expected to win, given the progress they've made, and they thoroughly deserved it this afternoon. Well, the scoreline in the end rather flatters Wales. It is five defeats from five games. It is two wins and a draw for Italy, and Wales do have the wooden spoon. It finishes in Cardiff, Wales, 21, Italy, 24. And what John Barkley says there actually is very interesting, isn't it, Sergio? The reaction to these Italian players compared to two years ago and that famous flourish at the end that gave them the victory, very different. This is a team that is expecting to back up performances, but let's not take away the enormity and the history of what they've done in this Six Nations campaign. Absolutely. I think they show how in these two years this team take confidence in themselves. And uh, yeah, we said before the game, Italy comes to the game confidence. Uh, they made history today, <laughs> and I think the results probably don't uh, reflect probably the, uh, the 80 minutes. But Italy won the game. Was the the plan for the coach? Uh, he find and he he looked for consistency, and today he can be really part of this team. And for Wales, uh, yes, a, a few tries in that second half there to, to hang on to, a few line breaks that they will look back on and think perhaps they could have taken more from. But overall, 
this has been a terribly disappointing campaign from Warren Gatlin's men. Yeah, very tough campaign. I thought some of the players who off the bench were brilliant for Wales, and Mason Grady was had, a, had an amazing impact. But you can't take away how good Italy were, particularly in that first half. It's a massive moment for Italy. It's the best ever Six Nations result. They've come back from so much criticism to win two, draw one, and still only be fifth and probably feel hard done by. But they've been brilliant. So I thought Wales didn't have an answer to their really aggressive defence. I thought so. Italy did thoroughly deserve uh, the win. The scoreline does flatter Wales a bit, yeah, but they, some positive. They were just bench. a few points away from England in that opening game as well. It's really only Ireland who, who crushed yeah. them, and they didn't perform against yeah, in terms yeah. of scoreline. Uh, this has been a, a monumental kind of improvement from the World Cup, hasn't it? And they've got real talent out there. Yeah, when, when you saw the coach Katada come in and say, you know, we, we, we're not celebrating, we're talking about how we need to get better. It's easy to say those things, but they, they proved it with the performance. And, and at the end of it, they're probably disappointed that they let those two tries in, because that was a 10-point win, really, for them today. It does flatter Wales, that final score. OK, let's hear from the man of the match, then, Ignacio Brex is with Sonia. Well, congratulations. Italy are moving up. What does it mean to you and this players that you are off the bottom of that Six Nations table? You know, it means a lot. We are so happy. We we'll work really hard for for this. Now we can it's still moving with our Italy movement, so we are so happy. You have got a fabulous centre partnership with Thomas Tommaso Manoncello. What's it like? How much are you enjoying playing with him? Now it's easy to play with him. <laughs> He's an amazing player. He's a a real horse <laughs> so now I'm so happy to play with him he's a young guy so he has a great future what's been the key to this improvement from Italy Oof, uh, a lot of things I would think that after the World Cup we have a, a good meeting between the players and the staff and we try all our best and we we improve our kicking game and our defense so I think that's that's everything a little party this evening a little party this evening I didn't listen. Will you have a party this evening? I hope it. I will tell that not that to, to my wife, but my wife, but I will take it. <laughs> <laughs> Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did he say with his wife? I, th I will say yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, he's a player, isn't he? He yeah. certainly yeah. is. And, and he's not flash, he does the hard work. Yeah, yeah. and it's his second man of the match, the tournament as well. OK, that is how things look for Italy right now. We know they haven't got the wooden spoon, but they could move yet higher up the table. Um, and if England uh, are, and sorry, if England beat France by a considerable amount, a big swing, and if Scotland um, also lose to Ireland by a considerable amount, there's a big swing, uh, they could possibly finish a couple places higher up the table, Sergio. Yeah. So uh, you'll be looking at those results, those matches with great interest. Yeah, of course. But anyway, I think uh, today the most important thing was uh, to see how this Italian team uh, improved, the big step forward they made, and especially the way that they react after this victory. Um, um, Brex was a fantastic player, Menoncello as well, but I think uh, all the collective today performed well. Uh, the defense was the key, kicking game. We see a team who uh, you know, control very well the, the, the pace of the game and uh, they really deserve the victory. So we're uh, really happy. Made history today for the Italian rugby. It's, it's I'm fantastic. So proud of this Let's group, hear, yeah. shall we, from Captain Lamoro with Sonia. Well, Michelle, for the first time since 2015, the wooden spoon is headed elsewhere. What does it mean to, to these players that your team is on the up? Well, obviously, it's everything for us. Um, I can, I want to say thank you to every single Italian one that is here tonight and obviously not getting in the wooden spoon. But I think we, we want to achieve even more. Obviously, we know we've done a good, good tournament, but we know we can do a lot better than this. And but thank you to everyone. Italy are much improved. What's the biggest change that Gonzalo Casada has managed to affect with you since he took charge? I think there are few things that we've changed. Generally, the mindset with what we go onto the pitch is obviously something that we never had before, I think. And we got lots of confidence. But it's because in the last few years, we've worked so hard. We've worked for each other. We went through lots of difficult moments. And now we just have to sell these this good ones. I mean, not so long ago, there were calls for Italy to be relegated from the Six Nations Championship. What is the potential now of this team? Well, two games doesn't define a team. 
we started after the World Cup and it's the same now. So I think we still have to be a lot more uh, consistent in what we're doing and like, you know, to be competitive with every single team of the tournament. And that's what we want to achieve in order to get the respect we, 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 we want. Many congratulations, Michelle. Well done to you all. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. So a run of eight successive wooden spoons comes to an end. And we talked about how difficult that is to keep that positivity. And as a captain, to keep getting your players to believe that you're moving in the right direction. You were there in many of those seasons where a win was hard to come by. Uh, he's been very impressive, obviously, both for club and country this season. Yeah, of course. I think, I think you must be resilient. You must have, you have never give up trying to, uh, when you're leader a team, you need to have Every time a good body language and a good, uh, a good uh, uh, you know, approach every time, every training with a lot of energy. And, and the thing that impressed me a lot from Lamar is he's calm. Uh, he's a guy who, you know, you do the best Six Nations ever and you can be like crazy and celebrating and be no really, you know, and he's really calm. And they, this team, they know where they want to do, go, sorry. And Gonzalo Quesada, as he said, he's trying to change this mindset in this team. And they have the quality, they have the talent. Now they need to be consistent. Maybe they're going to go a little bit crazy now, but it is marked, isn't it? The contrast, Sam, to two years ago and, and Martin, that they were celebrating wildly, throwing their bodies onto the pitch. And there's a, there's a real air of, you know, this is what we do now. I honestly thought they'd let down today. I thought they'd let down and Wales would just beat them today. I thought after that big emotional win, I thought they, they won't be able to come back. But they controlled that game. They took the initiative. Yeah, Wales helped them, but they took the initiative. And then when Wales started to come back, they got it back and they put the game away. So it was a really mature performance. And at the end, they're not, you know, it's what we came to do. We win. Yeah, you celebrate your wins, but next time you meet up, it's all about how do we improve? What, what do we need to get Yeah, they were, they were giving away a few more penalties in that second half, weren't they? And starting to lose a little bit of that discipline that was so impressive in the first. Yeah, they, they needed to come back out with the same energy and maybe that just dropped a little bit. But uh, Wales did a bit physically, so Wales did improve there in the second half. So yeah, they didn't continue where they left off, but as Martin said, to back up that emotional performance, much harder, much easier said than done. So that's a really good effort to do that. Uh, well, Dathis Jenkins, of course, took over as captain for this campaign. Let's hear from him now with Sonia. Dad, it is the wooden spoon. What are the emotions? Oh, complete disappointment. Um, no disrespect to Italy. As a playing group, we, we want to strive to, to win those games uh, and be better than those teams. Um, yeah, just severe disappointment. Pressure often does funny things, doesn't it, in sport? Was that a factor, particularly in that first half, because Wales were poor? Well, you like to think in these pressure scenarios, as players, we, we, we rise to the occasion, uh, but yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to look back at it and, 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 and see if we did. Obviously, with the loss, I don't think we did. What would you say to the fans here today, to those watching at home who might be wondering what the future currently holds for Wales? I think, um, first of all, thank you for sticking by us, but um, this, this playing group will give everything, as you've seen to the last minute there. Um, just stick with us because I, I promise you the future's bright. When, when we go away from this environment now, we're just going to have to get better and better as individuals, as players. And uh, when we come back together as a group, we'll be in a better place. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, it was the worst possible start to the second half, wasn't it? Having had all that chat half time, what Wales have got to do and come out is, is not concede what they did with uh, Lorenzo Panis try and uh, and obviously this is a player who was filling in for Papa Watts who was the hero of, of uh, a couple of years ago wasn't he and that was a brilliant individual effort but again you know you're looking at Wales mistakes yeah I mean it's great Italian attack um, and it's where we know that Italy are so strong it's off first phase as well which is really hard to do to score first phase defense is normally organized but Menoncello runs a really hard line here he pops out the back Wales bite on it Costello is now yelling Nick Tompkins to push across, but Tompkins doesn't move, so Wales end up getting a little bit narrow. Tompkins gets tied in, George North has to step in, and then Rio Dyer needs to follow George North in. If the man inside you goes in, you have to go in. Instead, George goes in and hits the Italian player there. Rio Dyer now has to follow suit, but that's the second time for the two tries that Wales on the edge got caught in no man's land. You either got to go man and ball, or you completely sit off. They do neither. Italy at the line break and then they end up scoring. So really good attack from Italy. Really good decoy runners, good handling ability. But Wales just getting stuck in defence on the edge. They just quite haven't got the same... They're not all on the same page. And as a backline unit, you've all got to be connected to each other. And Wales just getting split too many times. Great feat, though. 
Yeah, and uh, Lorenzo Pani put some speed there. Then I, again, I think the key on this move is uh, again uh, Nacho Brex who take the ball, uh, carry the ball until the end and make the, the ball pass. And, a fantastic try. What a boost for Italy because he's come in to replace a superstar and then he scores yeah. it. And that needed finishing. That wasn't an easy finish. He had to finish that. So for the whole team to see a guy as a replacement come in and do that, you think, wow, we can, we yeah. can do this. Had to run through yeah. quite a few red shirts, didn't he? Uh, the defence was very impressive overall today, but actually this individual moment deserves pulling out. Ross Vincent, who, of course, uh, about four months ago was still delivering pizzas. He's at Exeter University. He's an Exeter player. And uh, today... Uh, well, this was a moment that he will remember, this big tackle. It's, it's stuff like this that wins you games. It, it, that wins you games. You know, it looked like for all money Wales are going to score. And he's got real pace, this guy. He said at half-time, he's an interesting play. He showed it on attack against Scotland. They come back and they, and they, they turn the ball over. That probably kept them, you know, ahead and, and won them the game. Yeah, I was trying to work out something to do with topping it off um, and his favourite toppings, but that it will take something <laughs> to top that for him this weekend and for his whole Six Nations, actually, to come in and, and be an impact. People talking about his pace, talking about, you know, what, what a future he has, but showing there that pace, that strength and, uh, and vision. Yeah, he have everything, of course. He was rushing in defence uh, when... Uh, with a, a line break for Welsh, but definitely Manuel Giuliani as well, and the breakdown was excellent to steal that ball. But uh, yeah, uh, Ross have a, a very good talent. I think he's a very good athlete, and he can play number eight, six. So uh, this, this is the great thing about we're talking about Italy now. Before we were talking about oh they've got they've got Sergio Parise or you know they've got like a handful of players. We're talking about five back row players now that they've got three starting. The two that come off the bench are brilliant as well. They're getting some yeah. real strength and depth now, which is great. Uh, okay. Let's go to our commentary box uh, where Nigel Owen is uh, waiting to have a chat to us. Rather than uh, you guys have a look at the Elliot D try first, shall we let Nigel explain uh, fully why this was eventually permitted, Nigel? Yeah, well, John Barkley has been asking for this team all to be up in the Scotland-France game. It's a bit too late for that. Yeah, <laughs> so there's a couple of things I need to check here. First of all, I need to check is the ball on the ground uh, and is it over the line so yes yes it is so obviously then you have a grounding but then what the TMO wants to check was Elliot D actually tackled now he is taking the ground here and he probably is tackled but the key thing is here that changes that decision on field decision of no try or to a try is the fact that the Italian defender the number 21 there he actually lifts and pull Elliot D over the line if he hadn't have done that and Elliot D would have continued that movement it would have been a double movement and there'd been a penalty against uh, Elliot D and then they go back for the advantage so there were three things to look at there and they got then to what was the correct outcome which was a try to Wales so even though he's stopped and he's on the floor he's stopped and he's on the floor yep you, he can then get off the floor and score. Well, no, he can't, but he was taken he by the Italian, but he was grabbed over by the Italian player. So if you look at it again, well, Madden, he's, he's, he's the Italian player grabs him and pulls him over. So Elliot so D he, has he, done he, nothing wrong. He also didn't, didn't make any effort to get over the line himself. He doesn't need to do that because he's pulled over by the defender. So Elliot D has done nothing wrong. He's actually lifted over by the Italian player. It's rugby's equivalent of an own reason, try. It's a try, yes. <laughs> well, you could say that, Gabby, that's a good one. An own try in rugby, yeah. <laughs> OK, Nigel, thank you so much, as always, for all your contributions, uh, clearing pleasure. various things up for us over the last few weeks. Um, Italy's game management, very impressive overall. You just alluded to it there, actually, that when Wales were kind of getting back into the game, they were picking up those penalties, weren't they, kicking those? But, Sam, you've, you've picked something out you want to have a look at. This is not a sexy clip, but this is the <laughs> biggest difference between Italy last year and this year. This part of the field, Italy used to try and run from here, and they'd end up getting turned over. But now they're smart, they box kick, they have a good chase and they fill this chase then with a full back line. They compete hard at breakdown. They fill the line now. Wales are trying to get back into shape. This is the best place to blitz on now because you're coming onto the ball, you can rush off the line again. Wales play and they have to revert to a kick because they've got nothing else to do. Now, Italy of old would have ran that and they would have conceded possession by a knock-on or a penalty. And I used to think, oh, just, just kick the ball in your own half. Italy last week, haven't seen the stats yet for this week, but last week, Say there's 100 rucks. They only had 17 rucks in their own half. In the whole of the game mm. last week, because they're like, don't be silly, kick out of here, play in the opposition half. So their game management, that middle third, is so much better. And that's why they're in the lead a lot more in these games. Uh, almost like a confidence in their identity, isn't it, as yeah. well, and sticking to that. What does this mean to you, Sergio, watching this Italy side, not just today, but through this tournament, and being consistent and backing up performances? Yeah, look, I'm, I think I'm very proud, but it's something that some say. Uh, I think this, this team showed that they have a lot of depth 
uh, Capuozzo, the, everyone talk about him. Now, today, Lorenzo Pani making an outstanding performance. And in the back row, too many depth, too many players they can play. And they play a fantastic rugby. So uh, I think I'm, I'm, we can be very, very confident for the future. I think it's a long way. Uh, two wins, a draw. Uh, of course, it's the best Six Nations ever for Italy, but it's not uh, no, uh, uh, a, perfect, a perfect Six Nations. And Italy wants to show every year that we deserve and we can. After this standard, we must be consistent. And so now, today, I think that everyone expects Italy to be more competitive as a team. Okay, well, Warren Gatland finished bottom of the championship in 1998 when he was head coach of Ireland, but he's never picked up a wooden spoon with Wales. He's with Sonny. Well, Warren, bold facts are it is a first wooden spoon for 21 odd years. I just wonder what you might say to the fans here today, to those at home who will find that a little bit painful. Yeah, they will find it painful. <laughs> uh, we find it pretty painful as well. So, you know, obviously, didn't help ourselves in the first half and didn't get enough uh, go forward and momentum. And you know, when we got, when we got some ball on the front foot, we looked dangerous. You know, Thomas Williams started to open up a bit, and so you know, probably that's a messaging for us is about making sure that we you know, get some, some momentum going forward to be able to get on the front foot and that probably definitely didn't help in the first half and um, you know, so I so said we've been a bit lateral and, uh, and uh, you know, allowed them to probably defend us pretty easily. I know there'll be a review on incoming, but you know, given the size of the player pool and the way the regions are going and the resources available, is this rebuild just a little bit harder than you thought it might be? No, it's not actually. It's kind of like, you know, we knew the inexperience we had in the squad and uh, players that were asking to step up into, into leadership roles. And But for us, it's, it's about learning from that and, and taking the, the good moments out of the game and going, this is what good looks like. These are the sort of things we've got to do. We've got to get on that front foot. We've got to win some of those collisions. And that allows us to play when we want to do it. You force um, some of those situations when it's not quite on, and then you've just got to be a little bit more conservative in, in doing that. So, um, like I said, I can't question the effort of the, of the boys, and they've given us everything in this campaign. And in the fairness to Italy, you know, well done to them. They, we didn't put them under a huge amount of pressure, and, and they, they managed the game exceptionally well. You wouldn't mind a player like Joe Hawkins, though, from, from Exeter. Will you be looking at the old 25 cap well, law? Is that a help or a hindrance? It's not a help at the moment, <laughs> um, <laughs> given that uh, you have a few players unavailable to you and you know, you'd like to have uh, everyone in the pool available, but it is what it is at the moment. And you know, until, until you know, that you know, either gets looked at or changed, then we just have to deal with what we've been throwing. Throw. You did say after your first Six Nations back that, oh my God, if I'd known about what was going on in Welsh rugby, I might have thought differently. But are you in it for the long haul? Do you have any regrets? No, not at all. No, I'm, I'm really excited about this group. I, like I said, I think they're going to learn from that. And some youngsters who will, you know, improve from the experiences. We've just got to make sure that we're um, very clear on the sort of things that might be about simplifying our game a little bit to make sure that we do get on on that front foot to make sure we do get some go forward and, and that'll make a huge difference for us really appreciate your time thank right. you cheers thank you well all you can do is learn and that's all you can say right now isn't it if you're warren gatlin because there will be a lot of lessons i'm sure that will, will come from this campaign you'll look closer at this tomorrow in rugby special so it's clock bbc2 you'll sleep on this sam and you'll try and find some positives as you sit here right now what are your immediate thoughts in the aftermath of that tournament my immediate thoughts are the harsh truth is Wales don't have the same quality of players as, they used to, as they've had historically. Um, there are some great players in that team. There's some excellent players, but there's not enough of them. And I think that Warren said about go forward. I think Wales are actually quite a skilled team. You know, they showed the Six Nations. They can score tries. They got it wrong today, but they're quite well skilled. The one thing they fall short of is um, a number of athletes. And that's a long-term process bringing through athletes. That's not just you bring them into camp, you train them for a month. That's from the age of 14, 15, 16, when you bring them all the way through. So the athleticism and the skill level, skill level's there, uh, but the athleticism's not. They need to unearth some players. Mason Brady, come on, went forward, Wales well, score. Will Rowlands comes on, carries forward, Wales end up scoring. Evan Lloyd, that's why he's looked at as a hooker, because he's got a big physical presence. His ceiling is very high. So you need to have skill level, yes, but you need athlete too. Could we see a dramatically different Wales performance in a year's time? How long is it going to take to turn this tank? Well, if they hadn't made all those mistakes that they made, they would, that game would have been a lot, lot closer. So you've got to get rid of those first. You've got, you've got to get rid of those basic errors, because they, they just kill it. They stop, they stop you from doing anything. If they do that, they've shown that, I agree with Sam, they're, they're skillful. They're just, they're just lacking a little bit of power at the moment against the very best.
Um, Sergio, I think the final word to Italy, because uh, whatever happens in those other matches, they could move up the table today, of course. It's their best ever Six Nations tournament. Where do they go from here? Yeah, that was fantastic. Fantastic, I'd say. I think now uh, everyone will be respect more Italy in the future. I think they've got a team that, you know, that's going lost against, against them. I'm personally really proud because, uh, you know, playing for too many years, um, you know, taking so many wooden spoons during the last 15 years and see Michele Lamaro and all these guys, you know, achieving some good things for Italian rugby is make me so proud. Thank you so much, guys, Sam and Martin, Sergio. As always, it's been a, a fantastic Thank to you. share this afternoon with you and indeed the whole Six Nations tournament. Thank you for sharing it with us too. Uh, so it's been a brilliant tournament for Italy. Rugby's coming Rome. Good night. Afternoon. For George North, how does this great story end? What a start by Italy. And Wales in real trouble. What a glorious try. Wales have a try. Mason Grady is in for a third Welsh try. Victory will be Italy's. The Six Nations did not disappoint. And highlights analysis of all three matches on the way.